and welcome back to the Giant Beast Cast. Thanks for joining us. If you're watching this live, just a reminder, if you're not watching this live, we have been trying to do these live around, let's just call it 145, 130 to 145 ish on Thursdays, Eastern time. If you want to catch us doing it live, go to giantbomb.com slash chat. And that's where you can see that uh, while we kind of do these from home. Uh, and we appreciate your patience. I know the audio quality has just been fantastic. Uh, you probably don't even know. Uh, but here we are in episode uh, 257, let's call it. And it is either Friday, April 24th, or Thursday, April 23rd. I don't know. I still like that this goes up on Friday, but it really doesn't anymore. I'm joined by Alex Navarro. If you want to see me do it at live, check out my OnlyFans. Okay, I'm joined by Abby Russell. <laughs> cool, I want to plug something. Uh-huh. Good for you, Alex, making some money on the side. Hey, you know, I just I, I found my I found my niche. Nice. Hi, what Abby. is it? It's doing sex live. It's Hi, doing Abby. it live. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if there was a subset you specialized in, but that's fine too. Uh, Hello, happy uh, to be here. We need, you need to have the, the those things are the ones that like when it goes like ding 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 when like people donate. Uh, Jeff Bacalar is also here, focused. Hello, like a laser, the back of laser. I too have contemplated going the OnlyFans route. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, uh, still on the fence about it. You guys, not gonna lie, yeah. could go either way on this one. What's holding you back? Hey. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe that's an offline issue. discussion, but once you go on OnlyFans. Your life's an open book, let me tell now, you. Now, uh, as someone who has not uh, done an OnlyFans account, is it, uh, is, it, is it a website or is that just a name for a genre? Well, no, it's a website. It's a website. Yeah. I think okay. it's like a Patreon, but for porn. Is that right? It feels like porn Patreon. I'm sure it's for other things, too. It is for other things, too, but let's be real. A lot of it is for porn. It's be for real. Porn. Yeah, Wait, who real. uses it for other things? Like, whoever uses it for other things is confused. All I'm saying is that, that there, I believe the stated mission of the company does not explicitly say it is only for this, but the vast majority of people who are on there are people doing sex work. Well, I oh. hope they are fans. I figured it was. Fans. I know. I figured the title was Only Fans of Porn. <laughs> they just it is not. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, uh, could, hmm. could Transformers fans go on there? Uh, only Fans of Transformers? <laughs> I mean, if that's what you're into, man. I mean, look, we cater to all <laughs> interests, you know, within mm-hmm. reason. It's mm-hmm. just, it is what it is. I am a uh, doing it live generalist. I will, I, whatever you need, I'll make it happen. Great. You Fantastic. can make that work. You can make that. Oh, you can make that There is almost work. assuredly Transformers porn. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I mean, one would assume. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't know. I mean, I would. I would. I would know. I mean, for the article. Oh, you, you guys, you guys <laughs> know about my secret Transformers porn persona, Rodimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> oh, oh, that's too much. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, you know, now that I think about it, every Transformers name is a kind of a good porn name. Uh, yeah, it yeah. is. Ultra Magnus. That's what they call me. Uh, <laughs> they call me Starscream. It's not very cool. Um, they call me Megatron. Let's get into uh, the... No? Okay. They call no, me just... Starscream. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Metroplex. <laughs> the only one I know is Bumblebee. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a sweet name for my porn star name. <laughs> yeah, uh, all they, right. They call me Cliff Jumper. Uh, they call me Hound. Mm-hmm. That These are all real Transformers names. I believe it. Uh, they call me, um, they call him, what's a, what would be a bad Grimlock? Transition? Grimlock would be okay. That's not great. Uh, uh, Trypticon isn't that great either. Uh, let's move what, on. Maybe one of the Constructicons, maybe one of them has a good porn name. Yeah. Is Herbie a Transformer? No, he's just a love bug. Okay. Yeah, no, he's just a ghost inside a, a VW. Um, but yeah, Dev- Devastator porn. would it's be, gotta be Herbie one. porn. Herbie porn? Oh yeah, somebody's getting it on with Herbie. Uh, I played uh, I played some video games this week. As we continue, uh, <laughs> I guess we-, we can talk about that. I mean, I, I can also talk about more <laughs> sentient vehicles if you want. No, we. Got, you, what's your favorite sentient vehicle? Uh, my new one is the dirt bike from the movie The Dirt Bike Kid, which I watched this week. Uh, it is an '80s film. <laughs> It was on this thing called Trash Night, which is a thing I used to go to in Boston when I lived there. Uh, trash semi- Night? Yeah, Trash Night. That's 
It's just called Trash Night? It's just called Trash Night. It was a movie thing they used to do. They would play a very bad movie interspersed with some really, like, the kind of short films and instructional videos that actually make you feel like you're going insane while you're watching them. Yeah. Uh, And so they, since this, we are all locked at home, Mm -hmm. they have recently taken to uh, doing Trash Night on Twitch. Uh, So they showed uh, me, for the first time, the Dirt Bike Kid and let me tell you, that is a cocaine-addled feeder for dream of a fucking movie where the kid from A Christmas Story befriends a sentient dirt bike who is, as far as I can tell, a murderous spirit. A oh. spirit that is only out for revenge and animus and rage. Uh, and it is a bizarre relationship between this child and this bike. It is very uncomfortable in a number of different spots. And there is a straight up part of that movie where they send the bike to prison. It, well, okay, okay. If you, if I you, love that. If you take the prison part out, that's kind of remember that movie, The Wraith, with Charlie. Was it Charlie Sheen? Wraith. Okay. Now, so yes, there's the Wraith. There's Christine. There are things yeah. like this. Those are not children's movies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Those are not movies right. where it is about a kid befriending, you know, a, a supposedly happy-go-lucky, you okay. know, uh, adventure fair. vehicle. Yeah, yeah. But instead, this is a, a kid who has befriended uh, a murder spirit inside a bike. And okay. the bike goes to prison. A cop actually wheels the bike into a jail cell at one point, it, and I... I actually fell out of off the couch fucking laughing at that. I could not. I don't know why bike prison broke me. <laughs> so is, is there, well, was there like a whole courtroom? Like, that's what I would want to see. I would want to see like a full courtroom drama of this like bike and like mm-hmm. the bike talking to a lawyer and like trying to get out of it. The bike does not speak. It only emotes through its headlights kind of moving up and down into the side. Uh, but I will say that at one point they do slap handcuffs on Come on. The bike. <laughs> oh. I love that. What part of the bike do they put it on? The handlebars. Yeah, obviously. That makes no sense. You can still, no, but like if you put it on the wheel, Slip it actually off, won't yeah. ride. But like, oh, oh, the you're, looking, you're searching for logic? Are you searching yes. for logic? There, uh, the story's got to be grounded in something, Jeff. So does, does the bike have a name at some point, or do they just call it the dirt bike? They never really name it. It is the dirt bike. <laughs> okay. It is just this kid's bike. And it is, uh, that movie's a fucking nightmare. I'm glad I watched it. Jeez. <laughs> well, I am glad we got there through Transformer yeah. Sex uh, because that was a yeah, good we payoff. Did. Uh, I, uh, I, I, <laughs> I played the Final Fantasy VII. I, uh, I, I, How's I, that? I downloaded that remake uh, and I played it. And it is, I was not, I was not eager I was right I, I wasn't yeah i'm thinking of the words i'm thinking of they're coming to me it was a really like okay. hectic morning over here at the old caravella household this morning it was uh it was not i was not eager to jump in and then when the the music hit and like they started doing all the scenes i was instantly like oh why did i wait to get in here this is this yeah okay i guess i do have enough nostalgia for this to uh to jump in i think that the soundtrack on that sounds awesome especially if you're fond of the final fantasy soundtrack uh, the character renditions there are what they are. I think they're very good, and the voice acting I think is not so great. So I think the okay. yeah, I I, I mean the, the combat is also extremely um, different. If uh, if everybody, it's, it's very much more modern fa- Final Fantasy, right? Uh, I don't know because I didn't. I haven't played a Final Fantasy in a while, but it is you know okay. your the way they've translated your uh, ATB that active time battle stuff into. Um, which was a turn-based thing as you're waiting for meters to fill up into active combat all the time is interesting. You basically have a, you can run around, do whatever you want, swing your sword whenever, but to use your abilities, you have to wait for this little bar to fill up and you kind of do that by hacking away at guys and you can switch characters. Um, It's, it's a cool system. They've figured out an interesting way to do it. I think the game, uh, the combat is working for me. So uh, I'm I'm okay. actually enjoying that. I think it's just the, the level of, you know, I don't know if you could do a better take path on the script and without losing a lot that was in the original game. So it okay. is it is what it is. It's still corny as hell. Uh, a lot of the bad. So I'm I'm also waiting uh, for those that don't know Final Fantasy VII. Cloud is a mercenary and he starts off being the most insufferable uh, piece of shit uh, in a video game. He's just He's so annoying. He's so cocky. And, you know, he progresses through the game. And I don't actually know where this one winds up because, you know, it's this Final Fantasy has been split into, let's just call them, an infinite amount of parts by the time they're done. I have no idea. 
I would say a minimum of three installments for this one, just kind of based on what people seem to be saying. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't actually know, and uh, who knows when the end of this will come about. So I'm not sure where this ends up and what the character progression is by the end of it. So we'll see. But I'm, I'm enjoying it, and I think um, I was kind of on the fence about getting it, and I got a lot of strong recommends from people. Um, so I'm, I'm having fun with it, and uh, I'll, I'll keep going with it. I look forward to playing it. Uh, some other stuff I've been playing, uh, I can talk about next week. Uh, that is not um, Chimera Squad, though, because I am looking forward to playing that hopefully tomorrow. I think that's when that comes out. Uh, it is. I want to get my hands on that. Again, that is the kind of little offshoot XCOM thing they, they're putting out. I think it's 10 bucks on Steam. Comes out tomorrow. I want to get my hands on it and, and check it out. Um, played uh, some Division 2. You remember that game? Oh, I God. do. Yes. How could we forget? Went back in. They've changed a bit of that game. Uh, nothing really to spend too much time on. Uh, but I didn't. Oh, do good. The, yeah, I didn't do the New York. <laughs> I'm stuff sorry. I'm sorry. You just you set me up for it. I, I did. I'm not being mean oh, to Vinny. Listen, I can take uh, it. I, 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 I mean, agree. you're always mean to me. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. just what. It's just, <laughs> yeah, if yeah, this yeah. was, if this was what it feels like, man, you've been overacting a lot. <laughs> you've been what, <laughs> what a wimp. Well, maybe, um, maybe it's just not as like uh, meaningful when it comes from me, uh, who's like the epitome of niceness. And could not even. That. Yeah, that's yeah. a known thing. Yeah, that's what they you say. Look it up. That's definitely it's what me. they say about you behind your back. The. Uh... Mm. <laughs> 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 that was funny. You know, that's just funny. Uh, that's just funny. And what was the thing about Division Two? Um, yeah, Division Two is uh, is fine. It's good. I like it. I like what they're doing. There's a. Uh, it took me a little while. Oh, you like get... it? Oh, oh, you cool. like it? <laughs> like, cool. You fucking like that game? Oh, cool. Um, it's it's an easy time sink. I think we're we're just trying to get yeah. through a bunch of the the uh, Washington stuff before. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I I fucking like... life hasn't felt life hasn't felt enough like a goddamn Groundhog Day movie. We gotta have you coming back with oh, I'm playing Division Two. <laughs> Come on, man. God, break Jeffrey, the cycle. Okay. I'm all right. Okay. Talking about, <laughs> talking about the damn, the damn dollar flu. We're yeah. going through the no dollars flu right now. Yeah, seriously, man. <laughs> like I'm trying to break out of this rinse repeat, uh -huh. die another day. Uh -huh. What is it? The Edge of Tomorrow? What was that movie? Yeah, that's Edge of Tomorrow. Edge yes, tomorrow. that is the yes. You know? uh, Come on, it's, it's the Edging Tomorrow fans only. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, let me. All right. Let me talk about. Uh, we talk, We haven't talked about Animal Crossing, right? No. Correct. Okay, We've yeah, only yeah. talked about the Division Two and porn. And porn. Uh, I um I made uh, two point seven million bells uh, doing the old stock market. Uh, which did I was you have like, to go. Did you have to visit, or did nope. you in your own town? Nope. I, I uh, using your... used my spreadsheets and, and the the turnip profit and all that stuff, and it predicted a predicted a large spike incoming. So I went all in on bells uh, last Sunday. Filled my house. Honestly, up. Vinny. Yeah. You belong in prison for insider trading on this one. Uh, I think. You know, listen. I read the markets. I didn't. I didn't have any. I didn't time travel or do. I don't even know how yeah. to do that. You saw the signs. I just. You know. Abby don't even send actual people to actual jail for actual insider <laughs> training anymore. What about so... Martha? Uh, free Martha. Hashtag uh, free Martha. She's no, she's get... out. She's good. She's, she's, I know, she's but hashtag one. free Martha anyway. She's the one okay. that gave me all these uh, turn up tips. So the, uh, so I got, yeah, uh, Martha and I don't, Wesley Snipes? Was he, he was tax fraud, wasn't he? <laughs> oh, that was tax fraud. That was a tax issue. First yeah. I've heard about it. <laughs> Uh, so I made money and then immediately, uh, now I, I'm already down to like under a million, I think those, those, uh, so I was able to then over the course of the week, just pay a mortgage, have a belt, pay a mortgage, have a belt. And then, then now he wants like $2 million for like a, a basement or something. And I'm like, dude, where's, I, it's just a circle. You just, he get the kids get the money. They give it back to dad. They charge me the nook, nook kids get the money. It's just like. Man, it's when does it stop? Abby, have you built all the uh, the <laughs> expansions on your house? No, I have not because I don't do the bell exploits like other people do. Um, and yeah. also it's been like slow, so slow getting furniture that like I can't fill my house up. My house looks like just utter trash. Mm. So I have three rooms, including the main room, or I guess in addition to the main room, but I don't have an attic or a basement yet. But eventually it's expensive but, uh, it's no. so expensive i know it's, i put all my money into like bridges and like mm. ramps and like getting uh, all my buildings exactly where i want them yeah 
Yes, on yes. the town. On I'm the I'm a mayor of the people. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, on top uh, yeah. of that, like you're burning you're burning through the actual progression of the game. Like the like, again, <laughs> yeah. like the slow burn of Animal Crossing no. is the goddamn point of Animal Crossing. Like no. I you know what I got? What? I got a fucking bathroom. That's it. That's all my house <laughs> has. I have a main room and a bathroom, and that's it. And you know what? I spent time on that bathroom. It is beautiful. It's got bamboo. It's got fucking like a sand little oasis on the floor. It's awesome. I love my bathroom. Cool. You know what? If when I'm done with it. my bathroom, yeah. I will get another room. But I'm not done with it yet. No, I feel like, like this is the episode honestly, where we just lose our mind a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. right? I feel great. Um, but I um I will say the only reason I've been upgrading my house and why I've been like incentivized to upgrade my house is because of the storage. Because I'm running out of storage so quick. Mm, I think because oh, I just no. like buy every item of clothing I can and then like I like having options. I like changing my outfit every day. Uh you can run out of storage? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, it's like it's oh, like boy. and I've been right. running out quick. Yeah. I, uh... It's also like I I recently had to start like because I had so much wood, I had so much iron, I had so many stones. So I was just like, I guess I'm just gonna like make random shit from DIY and then sell it. And actually made a pretty good amount of money doing that, but it was like I'm not sure what to do with like my extra like resources. I just sit on them until I need something to like. There's a hot item I want to sell. But then I can't I put my shoes it. in the storage because I, I got too many star bits. That's why. It, that's how Tom gets you. You got. You've been wishing on all those stars. Well, okay. The first night I had the wishing stars, yeah. I just was like, "Did you do 30? I, think I had like a few friends come into the town, and we were just like chatting in the game, and then just like kept hitting A. Yeah. But I literally got like 300 star bits. Like I got my full number in one night because you know how you wow. get the like stamps. Yeah. I got yeah. like over the amount in one night because we were That's just like sitting there chatting, just keep going like this. Uh, and all your wishes came true. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, before, uh, so I, I have made my. I'm trying to put Tom out of business. That's what I'm just trying to do. Get all the bells. Put him out. Of, <laughs> kick him out of town. Uh, I just got and, the upgrade. Uh, I'm. I. I want to make sure I got everything. I still don't have everybody in my town. I think the per- point of that game is to collect, get everything in the catalog, and then my my Animal Crossing journey is fill out the museum, and uh, uh, I would like to get. I just got Flick to come to my town, so I want to get every bug statue. There's a, two oh, questions wow. for you, Animal Crossing fanatics in in here. Um, does a bug statue count as art for the owl? No, no. You so, the only art you're going to get is from uh, Red. So art is just recently added to the game, and it was in the previous Animal Crossing games from the start. But it is you basically go to Crazy Red is what he's called, and you go to his like boat. shop. Yes, and this in this game he has a boat, and the other ones it was like a tent. I think the boat might be a permanent fixture. Uh, um, is kind of what I've seen online. It looks like it's a permanent thing that's just going to always be there. But you're going to go there, and he's going to have like multiple items of art you can purchase, uh-huh. and For a only good price? one of them is a real piece of art. Wait, what? And the rest are counterfeit. So it's they're based off of real artwork. So you can see like, oh, that hand is turned wrong, or like the color of her ribbon is not right. Uh, and then you have to buy the right one. There's like a ton of guides online. I don't know if there are for this yet, but I'm sure there will be. Uh, but it looks like Crazy Red also sells just like regular furniture too, which is nice. <laughs> Does it fall apart? Like, the only art home? you can get is from Crazy Red. Well, so it's, I okay. just really, I really love that Red has an illegal art <laughs> trawler now that he just like t- <laughs> you know tools up to your little secret beach, and then it's just like, hey, come buy my illegal art. What a weird <laughs> island, man. This island is like going to be like, I got a guy who's just running the market. That's me on, on the stock market. We got Tom Nook just giving out no money loans uh, to everybody out there and making sure they stay in the system. He's got his sons working on a pawn shop. I got a drunk sailor who just washes up on shore every five days. And nobody wants to pick him up. Uh, I got people. It's a little ghost. I got a rabbit who just runs around burying eggs. Everywhere. This is like, uh, this oh. island is uh, needs to be bombed. I saw lore for wow, that was extreme. That was dark, I, yeah. you were going. <laughs> um, I saw some lore for Zipper, the Easter Bunny thing, the Bunny Day, Egg Day Bunny. Apparently, in the other games, it was like heavily implied that the eggs you were collecting were to fill up this bunny suit, which was filled with sentient eggs. Uh, this is like a real war thing. Uh, Zipper is a bunch yeah. of sentient eggs. Uh, it's a hell? bunch of those sentient eggs in that body suit. <laughs> Apparently, this is what I—I I don't know. We don't need corrections on it, but oh. if you Google it, I think it's in the wiki. Just kind of. This weird. is 
this is worse than the murder dirt bike. This is more disturbing. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Um, I do. Great. I love this just weird and ominous. Okay, here, but here's back to my original question. Okay. Uh-huh. Art. Is it ru- is it is it very rude that the owl won't take Flick's art? Because I think I think Flick makes pretty good tattoos. <laughs> and I went in there and he's like he's like now you don't have any art on you. And I was like, this- Vinny, that's a bigger you know who sets the art canon, right? I was like, like yeah. who does it? This is a Who's beautiful lo- straight blathers. <laughs> this is a beautiful long art. locust. Look at this. This is <laughs> lovingly made. He's like, no, you don't have any. Here's the thing: outsider art is still art. That is my belief. It is just. It is not part of the accepted canon. It is not part of the you know the the current like scene. But it doesn't make it not art. It is purely an expression. In this case, an expression of bugs. Man, Look, everything in the museum is stolen anyway. <laughs> It really True. is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think those fossils are just appearing uh in the dirt on this island? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think so. Three T Rex heads just suddenly appear on the island. No, somebody's fair <laughs> no expense. This island I is Tom curious. Nook's this is like Tom Nook's laundering island. He just basically takes all his fenced <laughs> items, buries them in the ground, and is like, Weird. I guess we'll buy oh, them. This is- this is clearly a tax shelter for him. That is a hundred percent the case. But Blath- you know what? What's he really hiding from it? The only question is: Is Blathers in on it, or is he just an idiot? Like, does he know that he's basically running a fence operation, or is he? Is he's he in? in on it? He's, he's in like on it? friends with Nook. Remember in the beginning, he's like my friend Blathers. Oh, yeah. He'll set up his tent. <laughs> yeah, he's always sleeping during the day because he's out there uh, securing items at night, burying mm-hmm. fossils in the ground. <laughs> Blathers is out there running illegal museums, launching new ones on new islands, new places all the time. He is totally in on it. I'm going to log in. Everybody's going to be in handcuffs. It's going to be pretty good. Uh, I think I think Isabel's probably the only uh, pure soul on this island. She just seems... Uh, oh, yeah. She's great. Let her go home. Yeah. She's no, at work all the she, time. She's the mastermind. That whole thing. <laughs> she's the like Kaiser the Cersei. Persona and just like the chill persona, like all that. It's, it's some fucking Kaiser Soze shit. Like that is her... <laughs> Just putting you off, making sure you don't know that she's actually back there telling Tom Nook what the fuck to do because she is the mastermind. All right, I'll buy but that. We can all agree that Tortimer's dead, right? Who's Definitely. Tortimer? He's the mayor. Wait, he's the old mayor from back in the day. Yeah. When I, for, he was it? Well, he was he in New Leaf? He was the yeah. He was a New Leaf, but he was okay. like it like retired. He wore like a tropical shirt, and I think he like encouraged you to go to like the little island. I think is where you saw him. I, I could be mistaken on some of that, but yeah. I think the was, whole conceit was like he retired, so you're uh, the mayor now. He was also like a million years old, so I mean, yes, he could so, have died of causes, or it could have been a hit. I don't know which. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you think the uh, the the creepy uh, uh, photo photo house dog is a, is a cop, or you think he, like he's just trying to get some dirt? Like, hey, come on, my what you know about uh, what you know about Tom? You know, feel like take a picture. Do you guys uh, do anything there? Got any fossils or anything? Or you think he's just a creeper who wants you to take he pictures? Definitely- he has the personality of a cop's vision of a hippie, so I would totally <laughs> buy that he is in fact undercover. Oh uh, man, uh, that game is. I'm still having fun, uh, even though yeah. I think I'm. I, I was hoping that I would get enough money to not have to worry about getting money, but I'm pretty sure I'm just going to burn through it all very quickly. I did invite my oh, yeah. brother, my brother, over to sell his turnip, so. I don't know if that's cheating, but he did come over and sell. No, I think that's price. part of the game. I think it's weirder when people are like, "Come over to my town," and also you have to pay me in like forty <laughs> Gulliver items and like and special villagers and all this weird shit. I need to get my hundred and seventy-five broken communicator parts or whatever it is to uh, build my <laughs> giant robot. I know. I still need that the gold armor recipe. Oh, how do you get that? Where is that coming from? Eventually they give it to you. Um, there's another game I'll talk about next week. Um, Should we talk about the um, Animal Crossing update stuff? We can talk about it now. We can save it for the news. If, if it's, okay. Uh, if okay. It, Just let's, curious. Let's spread it out. Let's spread I mean, the Animal already... Crossing out. All right. All right yeah. Alex, what you been playing? Uh, well, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have not actually messed with the update stuff yet because that just dropped today. Uh, but I... Am al- I have almost paid off my bathroom, and I'm about ready to get another room. Uh, meanwhile, my girlfriend has completely remodeled huge chunks of the island, has a much bigger house, has a whole system, the whole thing set up, uh, and I am just the deadbeat of that island, and I am totally <laughs> fine with it. Nice. Um, it, is, it is a nice thing to do for an hour in the evening, and that is it. I don't want any more to do with it than that. Uh, I, I'm playing I, some- I will Oops, say, before ahead. we move out of the Animal Crossing playing, because it, it's you know I have my kids on my island as well, 
Uh, and I totally am paying off their mortgages now. Uh, as I, uh-huh. I you I can just, do that. Just well, I just drop bags of money in front of their house uh, because I don't have <laughs> money. So uh, just, I love that. Uh, so then you don't move to my town. I <laughs> uh, got paid for college. <laughs> got to pay for their mortgages. Uh, they're buying. Yeah, their they, own- this is going to really set a bad precedent for when they be, when they turn eighteen and they're like, okay, so <laughs> when you buy me my house, they got to buy their own cars. <laughs> That's their only thing. Uh, all right, sorry, Alex. Just wanted to drop that because I also have uh, uh, guests on the. I am a guest on the island. It's my son's island. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, I'm thinking about I've, making a guest for mine. Anyway, carry on. No, all good. Uh, I have also been playing more of that ancient enemy game. That is the solitaire game from the people who make the cool solitaire mm. games. Uh, nothing new really to report on that one, other than I'm still enjoying playing it. Ancient. Uh, I did doubt. Ancient enemy. Ancient enemy okay. is the name of the game. Uh, and on top of that, uh, I haven't played it yet, but I did download it. This game called Cloud Punk. Uh, which boy, I am really tired of attaching the word <laughs> punk to things, but <laughs> like similar to uh frost punk, a game I like, despite the title, uh, cloud punk seems like it might be up my alley. It is a, uh, cyberpunk delivery game where you were kind of flying like a little flying car in a future city. And I think you're doing like illicit deliveries for, uh, uh, future crime people. Uh, I have not touched it yet. I just downloaded it today. I wanted to play it for next week and I'm going to. Uh, but that just launched today, so I'm going to check that out. Cloud Punk. Yes. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No. I I've been busy watching bad movies and uh, <laughs> doing streams, and have not had much else uh, for gaming time yet. But uh, I I did I did stare at the PlayStation Store for a while and really think about buying Final Fantasy VII, <laughs> but I have not actually hit the uh, purchase button yet. I maybe a little more staring at it will convince me to do it. We'll see. Abby. What have you been up to? Yes. Um, so I am, I like got less into Animal Crossing and then mm-hmm. they up, updated it. And now I'm kind of back in it. Um, okay. Not as, as, you know, I check in like in the mornings usually. I like wake up about eight and I check in. And then I kind of wait for my store to open and then I buy shit. And then I'm like, <laughs> okay, I guess I'm done. <laughs> mm. um, I also finished Ober Din. Oh, um, nice. Someone sent me, I think, the spoiler free guide that you were talking about that was incredibly helpful. Yeah. Especially because, like, once you get to, like, the last, like, few, it's very much like, well, this is anyone's game. Yeah. You know, it's, like, small things here and there. And, like, I have to remember, like, why did I deduce that you were this guy or that guy? Yeah. Um, I really liked it. I didn't really remember the ending. Um, and I will say, like, the very final scene, because there's one chapter that is, like, not unlocked until you get everything. Yeah. So I will say that, like, final, final chapter didn't enlighten me to really much new about it. Like, I was surprised of, like, this didn't seem to... I don't know. I thought it would have more of a reveal. Mm. Um, do you remember it, Vinny? Uh, I don't want to talk too much about it live because I don't want to yeah. spoil anything. But I, I do remember the final chapter. Um, I th- does it just kind of reveal a little more motivation? I think I thought it would, but I don't think it did. Okay. It just revealed sort of I... like, here's what happened in between that stopped a certain thing. Okay. But like, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think I was expecting like a bigger like like whoa some shit went down here oh like a like a and this was it flip it on its head kind of thing well because it's like there's a big turning point in like sort of the story that you're discovering of like wow things are ramping up yeah. and it's like okay things seem to be solved um yeah that like i don't know we didn't get it was also like something that i was a little bit frustrated with not super frustrated it was mostly fine but like you do just like the rest of the story the rest of the chapters you discover it out of order yeah. um but by the time you're done with it you just kind of spit back into like this other section and like you can't review it or like watch it in order which i found kind of i thought that kind of sunk but yeah. i i love that game overall yeah. i mean i think it's still one of the best games i've ever played but i don't know i was like it's a little underwhelmed its by the ending yeah it, it, yeah it has it has some things it's what makes me not necessarily want to see a return of the Oberdin 2 i just want to see more in that right. style from uh from the yes. developer uh return of the yeah. Oberdin. you played it on switch i played on switch it played great i loved great. it on the switch it's a good little puzzler for my little brain. <laughs> yeah. No complaints. And uh, I think similar to Alex, I've mostly just been watching stuff. I haven't been playing a ton. Nice. Finish Killing Eve. Finish Fleabag. Oh. Just going through all of it. Wow. Both Fleabag's very cool. Good. Yeah. I was late to the Fleabag game. I think this is a piece of trivia that no one but me will care about. But mm-hmm. I was watching Fleabag. And like, especially during the second season, I noticed that um, the main character would was wearing a necklace the whole time and i realized it's the same necklace i wear every day of my life so it was weird. Oh, wow 
Was that the necklace Whoa. you're wearing it right like, oh. now? If people are watching yes. the live stream. Oh wow. Okay. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, I can't see that at all. Whoa. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> it's a witch over a webcam. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is uh, uh, we're gonna need better resolution on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, I got a webcam, hopefully in the mail. I got uh-huh. the confirmation. It oh, did you? Me. You found one? Oh my gosh. Okay. It charged me, but I haven't gotten any kind of like shipping or anything. So we'll see. What uh-huh. kind did you get? I got the Brio, Logitech Brio, Brio the Brio. one Vinny recommended that's hard to find. Hard to find. That is what I was thinking about trying to get for myself as well. Maybe you I guys can send could you the link where I got yeah. it. I'll let, I'm a little, I, I'm worried it's not going to come. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. I ordered let me know a, when it ships. If it does, I will buy one. Okay, we will do. I ordered uh, my, well, actually my wife ordered uh, replacement plates once and we got a bag of socks. Uh, and that was a, uh, that was the first, the first and probably only time I was ever like, we just completely got ripped off. This was a, this was clearly not a legitimate site. So, are you, are you still eating off those socks today? Yeah, I'm almost done with them though. They, uh, they were great. Oh no, Jeff Bacalar. What's going on, my friends? How are you? You know, as best <laughs> as I could be. You know, how you... how good is anyone? Okay, not bad. Yeah. You know, on the relative yeah. scale. Okay. Making the best of it, making the, making the best of it. I think um, there's there are stress points and figuring out what those stress points are. And uh, we uh, we instituted a thing in our household because everybody is on top of everybody. That uh, which oh I yeah, think, this is about you. Let's hear it. Yeah, uh, we uh, instituted <laughs> a thing where we all, if we're really angry, we just hold up a picture of Jeff Backlar and make fun of him. Because uh, <laughs> yeah, that's honestly, I, would I like to your kids do that. Oh I my like god, it. I yeah. want to be witness yeah. to this. It's, That'd uh, be great. Yeah, so That'd we just kind of we just kind of do that for a while, and then kind of everybody forgets what they were angry about. Sure, and the stress levels just evaporate. Yeah, and everybody's just sense. like, oh boy, you just see even, my I, face, and like, I don't even Who's remember this fucking guy. I don't even remember any problems I had anymore. I don't, I don't this everything's fine. What's for dinner? What you up to, bud? Um, so I got a package, uh, in the mail the other day and this like retro handheld video game was in it. Now I don't, I don't, I I remember being approached uh, about this thing, Mm -hmm. uh, like back in February and then they wrote me and they're like, Hey, you're probably home, right? We're just going to send it to your house. I was like, okay. So it's called, uh, Evercade. Oh wow! Okay. 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 And what, what is it? Yeah. What are we looking at? And and what I uh, what it is uh-huh. is a it's, basically like a like retro a, Vita. Yeah, it's like a it's a it's a handheld video game system that plays like games from the I, games across many different eras and many different games that I don't even know. Like the it, hmm. the but, the ROMs, or do you have to like? Does you have to, no, like, how so there. The so here's the kicker: it's cartridges. What, what a, the fuck? Wait, so wait, you're, fuck? you're holding. Wait, that, do you have to have a cartridge? Logo? Huh? Yeah. Is that a te- techno? Yes, because this game. Because look what's in it. This is so. There's I think there's ten games. There's ten collections that they're gonna launch this thing with, and the Technos one is the Double Dragons. Uh. Super Spike Volleyball, this uh, River City Ransom game. Remember Renegade? Remember that weird? I like, do. Yeah. Here's what's on. So this is the box of the the, the Wait, little so you're, things. You're, you're holding up like a looks like an old Atari box. What's uh? Yeah. They it's a tiny little Atari box. Stuff? Huh? They licensed all these properties. Oh, what am I a fucking lawyer? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> does it say? Does it have like? Does it have like copyright stuff on it? Like yeah, it said it, when you boot it up. Hold on, so little caveat here. Uh-huh. You know, this is what I'm not super thrilled about. I mean, like for 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 all intents and purposes, like this thing's kind of all right. Like yeah. just to like have you know play like old school Double Dragon or whatever. They got yeah. there's an interplay one that has Booger Man on it, so <laughs> already it's oh, like great. pretty great. But here's the here's the thing, right? Uh-huh. So this Evercade unit I got. Uh, the guy I've been working with, who, who I think does PR for the company, it's Blaze Entertainment that is putting all this together in the UK. Okay. Um, so this apparently is like a, it's a, it's, it works and it's perfectly fine, but it is a little prototypey in the sense that like the cartridges don't really fit in, <laughs> like they fit. They fit. It's like a big oversight. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. 
I was look. <laughs> this happens. Anyone who's this happens every now and then. Usually they don't send the ones that still don't like perform perfectly to uh -huh. reviewers and stuff like that. But <laughs> look, I don't look, know. We're in a pandemic, man. You send what you got. Sure. We'll, we'll, we'll blame it on that. And uh, it's like a razor thin fit in a way that hmm. the, the final version of this will have maybe like a millimeter on each side to, to give you a bit of space. Tolerance like, is you got to real really, tight. you got to really thread the needle <laughs> on this thing, man. Oh this man. This thing is like, oh, <laughs> okay, there you go. Now. Okay, and then okay, now I'm in there. Right? Get your exacto knife and shave a little. Here, off. listen, listen to this. Listen to the uh, intro sound okay. here. It's so great. Listen to this. <laughs> well, it sounds like a VHS like some, tape or something. It's like like a, some Stranger Things yeah. bullshit, right? Um, yeah. So like, so yeah, it, like you got all the games and you like cycle between the games. And are the buttons good? Yeah, the buttons are good. Everything's good about it. The shoulder buttons are a little like mouse buttony in terms of like uh, how they feel, which I don't love. Like a switch. Um, yeah, like a switch. So, but like the games play real great. There was one they sent me 10, 10 games, and they all each have like anywhere from like six to ten games in each collection. Okay. There's a there's a Bandai one, there's um there's a bunch. I got them somewhere, but it's uh, I'm playing with it and I think I'm going to do a video depending on how like if I can grab some of the gameplay footage off this thing, which I think I can because it has a uh, it has a mini DV uh, mini HDMI to capture. Gotta it, right. I got a hopefully I got a mini HDMI cable somewhere, but um, they're charging. What are they charging? Charging eighty dollars for the starter pack, which is the thing and one game that in, you know and on that cartridge it includes like like i said like six to ten games so oh, it, okay it's like how much are the games selling for like 20 bucks a thing or the games are 20 bucks each okay okay which for some of them like i said has some of them have 20 games on it now again like there's it's so random like Look at the if you can pull up the website. I'm looking at it now. It looks like they are licensing all the stuff. I mean, clearly yeah. they're, 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 they're yeah, of course. Ooh, yeah. Of, course. Yeah. Yeah. of course they are. So um uh so yeah, yeah, I mean like some but like some of the games, like are you with me where you just don't even understand like where these games ever lived? Like so there's the Namco Museum, Interplay Atari. What uh what was Pico Interactive? What was that? The fuck mm -hmm. if I know. Mm -hmm. There was Mega Cat Studios, but I think that's like some sort of that must be a comp like a holding company that like re acquired older so. license or something like this. So let me ask you this, Jeff. It's what, all over the map. Yeah. What do you what do you think is, is this for like essentially if you want to bring this stuff on a portable system with you? I mean, there are a million ways to play these things. Uh right. is this mostly just like, hey, I I need to play Double Dragon on the bus? yeah i guess that's kind of it right like because you because i'm sure there are ways to play all of this stuff i don't know how legal all that is right but <laughs> uh, there's, like, i'd there say are... there's multiple legal ways at this point like you know there are collections on steam and, yeah. yeah um so do me do me a favor real quick yeah. look, go ahead and look at that mega cat studios collection number one okay and what do you want me these to do these are that? not get what are these games um uh, coffee sorry. crisis <laughs> <laughs> I Log closed jammers? the website already. No oh boy. I have a question. Crazy and I, dollars? I, this question is genuinely not being judgy. I'm curious. I feel like every time I have been like, here's an old game that I should check out, I play it maybe mm -hmm. 15 minutes and I never touch it again. And then I check out what other old games are in that like old game collection, assuredly. And it's a similar thing. Like, do do you go back and play old games? Not sometimes really. uh I, I yeah sometimes it depends what it, it is depends. Okay. Yeah, yeah it depends I, I i i've said this before i play certain but they're not even that old these games i play like half-life 2 a lot well those, I, that's that seems yeah different. it's that's more modern i if, if yeah. you're talking about like games from specifically this era yeah that's what i'm talking about with the exception of like half a dozen games including like mario world and you know hmm. maybe like Right. I don't know, every now and then I'm like, I want to play baseball stars, <laughs> yeah. you know, like for <laughs> whatever, game. whatever, whatever reason. Uh, very rarely am I like, 
dying to do this. And I've really, I don't know. I'm sure these people are out there, but I'm not sure about the, you know, tangible, like audience. That's just like, I got to have this, you know, I, I just don't know. I haven't seen it. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. Yeah. I'm just saying I haven't been exposed to that. I, did, uh, I, I mean, it seems like a, it seems like it fills maybe a, uh, at that price point, it's something you might get for somebody, right? It sounds like a, yeah, like it's a good like, price. Yeah. It's it, the price point doesn't seem like it's absurd because there are ranges of these things, right? There's a, yeah. There's like the the Jeff Gerstmann, Peter Brown area where you're like, this is a, this is not an emulator. This is a this is a three hundred dollar uh, NES or SNES or Genesis device that plays my carts and it, you know does it the, you know the analog. I forget what it's called, but they, you know very expensive. Then you have the like uh, super cheap collections like those you know twenty to five dollar things, and this seems like somewhere in the middle. Yeah, uh, you know, like for me. And I, I've only been talking casually with this rep and I, you know, I'm kind of just going to, you know, get back in touch maybe with like some questions. But for me, it's like this, the the best thing this has going for it is the price, right? Where it's like, yeah. oh, it's not, it's not this gigantic expense and you yeah. can feasibly get a good amount of games for like a hundred dollars or so, right? I guess. It also but seems what, convenient. Like I can yeah. appreciate the convenience of like, I don't have to set anything up. I don't have to know anything about like computers or anything. I can just totally take this on the bus. Like you said, and play and it, and it this old game right. for 15 minutes and then never again. And it feels all right. It, you know, it feels like it's well-made and stuff from the whole cartridge thing, but you know, the, the H, like like you you sh you can hook this up to a a TV with this HDMI, and then you yeah. have like a wired thing to your TV. Yeah, that but seems kind of stupid. But but the, <laughs> I was gonna I mean, say it doesn't have a controller support, right? Or does it? Does it have like USB? No, I think this is it. Okay. I think this is it. Okay. But what I don't understand is you can't convince me that like cartridges was the way to go here. Instead you know, like of, like a flash card or downloading stuff. Yeah. Oh my God! How big are these games? Like they're not. Like yeah. what are we doing? Making more materials? I just don't I understand mean, that. My guess is that these are this this device is probably made by people who sort of covet the sort of cartridge experience. That's, that's exactly mm -hmm. it. It says. What I, will say, I will say is that I was I did a little looking at this Mega Cat Studios company that you you mentioned, yeah. and it seems like they are a company that makes modern retro games. Like uh, they make games that are designed to be like uh, here's the Super Nintendo game we made. Like one of them is literally called Fork Parker's Crunch Out. Like they have been working with other, you know, other properties and stuff here and there. So got it. that seems to be their whole vibe. So glad we got them on board. But <sighs> you know No, I just like it's just it's it's kind of out of place with like all of these and eh, whatever it's fine great i mean I, they're making I, games in that vein so sure, actually if sure. it was a place for those games to live yeah. or a platform to live on it like that actually kind of makes some sense right i don't mean to uh to besmirch them uh, you already did too late <laughs> so um so yeah like i i don't know like the whole like i said the, the cartridge thing to me makes no sense mm. uh why i i i the the case they're making is that you know physical like the, there's nothing like inserting a physical cartridge into a thing uh, i mean okay yeah no but... i i stay up late at night thinking about that i got the fucking cartridge sweats if i don't get to fucking plug my cartridge <laughs> into something you know what i'm saying well, like how much can you how much can you romanticize a thing that like would feasibly reduce the cost of everything if you just got rid of it i feel right. like well they can like, also put that on like they don't have to run a digital storefront. They don't have to make sure that those games are available for download. They don't have to add in Wi-Fi or anything to the device. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the again. These are not like that. these are not expensive. Like yeah. I guess the notion of a store seems like a bigger investment. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Adding Wi-Fi. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I it doesn't know. really have like an operating system. So. Yeah. Um, uh, interesting. It's yeah, interesting, it is interesting to see I one of these come out and not just be um, like a, a failed Kickstarter. I I, I kind of wrote it off, and then I was like, "Oh, there's there's some stuff here," and you know, I don't know. I, I it's you can get it on Amazon. I think it comes out in May. All right. You know, I'll probably do a little video about it and and see how it goes. I don't know. I thought it was kind of cool because as soon as I saw Booger Man, I was like, "Well, well, well, <laughs> hold the phone here." <laughs> Never said that. Uh, well, I'll just well, say this: my Dan. kid thought it was okay, Dan Riker. So yes. Yeah, yeah, he. I, there is something like I don't like that game because it's fart jokes. There's just oh. something about that game that's like not that bad. Um, <laughs> and then my kid thought it was super great too with the yeah. with the nose picking and the farting. It's, he's <laughs> he's like, a child. 
<laughs> no, but you know what? I'll say this. Like, I showed him this, and then after like 10 minutes, he's just like, Can you play Spyro? And yeah. I'm like, Yeah, we should, right. we, should play, we should go play Spyro. Yeah, because that's a kid with refined taste. It's true. It's true. <laughs> um, so I mean, I feel like we could talk about the other thing too that I had on my little docket here. Okay. Um, is, it, is it another uh pitch? What do you got? It's not a game. yeah, it's kind of a pitch. I this was not on my radar. Uh, we were we were just in like a, a video meeting this morning, and this came up, and I started to like attempt to kick the tires on it a little bit. And I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's called Poly Mega. It is in the vein of another retro console thing. Okay, what is this? Have you one? heard of it? What's I think one? I saw it in the dock and clicked it, and then saw it was a retro thing, and then closed it. What's a Poly Mega? So again, I only just heard about this. Polycule. <laughs> I only heard of I only uh, I only heard about this <laughs> I don't know 90 minutes ago. Okay. But this is like a thing where you have to have the own your own cartridges, like the original cartridges and plug them in, yeah? So that's what I'm that was my initial takeaway. Um first off, so it's a console and it's a supposedly a modular console where you can like take a piece off and then buy like, oh, I want the NES part of this and attach oh, on the NES module. And then you get uh -huh. yourself NES controller connectors. Oh, okay. I want to play the SNES. You buy the SNES module and you pop it on and then you have S SNES controller interfaces. So that's that's a thing. Yeah, this thing that's... costs $400. So, you Whoa. so it's a Poly Mega. I'm also just looking at it right now. It looks like it has a universal controller if you don't want to, you know, if you want to not use your, if you don't yeah. have NES or SNES things. I'm trying to look up if it is, um, is it emulation or is it like the Mr. where it is a, a FPGA? Uh, it's definitely emul. It's, I think, it's, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's what I've been trying to like understand. I reached out to them and I was like, Hey, this just came across our desk and we don't understand what the hell it is. Can you call me and let's talk okay. about it? Um, but I wanted to bring it up because I could not believe that. Like apparently they were at E3 last year. I don't know if you guys saw that. Mm -hmm. um, and apparently they're going to let you use your own physical media out of the box for like ps1 games and other cd-rom games which right. i thought the playstation games are interesting i feel like i usually see these with just like the old nes <laughs> snes cartridge based right. stuff so it's kind of cool that you can play playstation games i wish you could play playstation 2 games yeah um <laughs> I, I like because i would nice. love like a playstation 2 playstation 1 one playstation 2 thing that i could like hook up to hdmi and use with like for streaming or just like yeah. an ease of use old game system. Cause I have like an SNES classic, like, I don't know. So it's funny. The, the description they... here says um, you can play games from CD-ROM based systems, like the original PlayStation and Turbo yeah. Graphics CD, but it doesn't say just those. So I wonder if they're, I know adding it's stuff so, I, I, I will say this. The, and again, hmm. we're talking about 90 minutes of knowledge with this. Thing, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, there are, way more like open-ended vague term like phrases getting thrown around with this thing like you know i'm looking at the faq and it's like hey can i load rom files and they're like no you can't <laughs> but there's going to be a store in december of 2019 <laughs> okay. yeah so, and, I, and i bet you could put one of those uh, uh rom carts on it you know like those uh snes carts that they're that just flash carts this yeah, is this like is definitely more yeah. Gersman's territory, but uh, yeah, I was just gonna say, man, I was like, oh, we should just ping yeah. Gersman real quick and just be like, hey, dude, just what is this? <laughs> yeah, what's the <laughs> what's the word on the street on this one? Uh, interesting. I mean, the, as as uh, we kind of enter the the emulation FPGA and various ways to get old games running more easily, I feel like that we'll see more of these. I mean, this is not licensing games this is bring your own game byo game yeah uh we'll pack the emulators into a thing and put a, a cd-rom drive in here so you can read your stuff which is it, the interesting it's worth, part it's also worth noting that polymega is comprised of developers who used to work for insomniac and blue point hmm. hmm. that is interesting actually um it's the team let's just i'm just reading this real quick they uh they've shipped products like oh okay they worked on Ratchet and Clank uh, Titanfall and have helped develop digital storefronts like the Google Google Chrome Store okay but uh, here's there's a I, pedigree here but here's the 
thing i mean not having touched this and having what now 15 minutes talking about the polymega yeah you got me i got you by like 40 minutes here but yeah uh 400 bucks is too much oh my god of course and with with each additional thing being 80 dollars, that's 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 way too much i I mean i I don't know for whom this is but uh that is like that is that's unbelievable. <laughs> like that, that, is, that, is too, that is just that is just too much money. Like I would, I would just love for like I, I feel like we've been in this sort of sea of confusion for for the better part of like twenty years, where like no one can give me a straight up answer about <laughs> just all the legalities. Like, what is is any of this okay? Like, you know, because you hear these rumors about like oh it's an expired patent so it's totally cool and you're just like what the fuck at addy like Hmm. i just wish someone would really just lay it all out maybe that explainer exists out there and i'm sure i'll get you know bombarded with that video that that explains it all but like yeah yeah just just just, just add these guys into the into the stew so it doesn't say jeff sorry the key is not to worry about the legalities. The key is to accept that the most likely outcome is that there is, the legalities are not correct and just not care. That is the way, that is how you get through life is just not, not giving a shit. It's like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, th- whatever whatever they think is legal that they're doing, let them keep doing that and we'll just, we'll ride that wave as long as the, the law allows. <laughs> the I can live with that philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to, I'm sorry. I'm just scrolling through their fact and just seeing if they do address like, Hey, is this illegal? <laughs> Did they just say it in there or they don't, they kind of don't answer that. Cause if you're I, a cop. You can't read this website. <laughs> <laughs> um, cause yeah, I don't know. Um, like my basic understanding is most of the time the emulation is, is legal. The ROMs are clearly copyright. Uh, and, yeah. And, right. And assets That's are the only clear cut thing. I think. Well, legal, I don't even know. Sometimes I feel on. like that might be even muddy i I don't know Uh, again i'm not a lawyer and then fair use stuff is even muddier than that but yeah i I don't know it's uh for all i know is four hundred dollars wow that jumps out at you it really does well four hundred dollars four hundred dollars and it's and then eighty dollars on top of that to play like snes games or nes games is like and then you also have to have the games it's yeah that's that is pretty wild especially considering i think you get like a playstation 4 or an Xbox for cheaper than four hundred dollars at this point. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I, like that's uh, yeah, that's that adds up. So, well, um, but cool. Thanks. That's Poly Mega for the kind of four hundred dollar Turbo Graphicsy CD-ROM drive modular thing, and then the other thing was the what was it ever not Everclear? What is it? What is it? Um, Evercade. Evercade. Yes. So now is the handheld eighty dollar ones with carts. Mm-hmm. Backlog, anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, I think that's uh, I think that's it for me, for me, for me. For Whoa. me. Whoa. That's the way that people are going to think that was like a weird... Uh, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> yeah. I thought you were skipping for a second. <laughs> Jeff is a record. Uh, I, got, I can do glitches. Uh, do another one. No. no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well, I, okay, let me add this before we move off of the poly mega. Uh, also... A lot of companies were putting out bundles of their classic things as well. So uh, mm. he, for four hundred dollars, you kind of could just buy a PS4 and then buy the bundle of like Data East games or, or you know whatever collection you want that is also emulating those games. I'm not trying to drag the the Poly Mega. I just think the four hundred dollar price point is just yeah, or, or the wild. MSRP on it. Maybe people will sell it for for less. Is is just so much. Uh, all right, backlog. Anything else you want to talk about? Are you back to pinballing this weekend? Yeah, I'm going to do it this weekend. Um, it'll be featuring a new camera angle that I'm very Ooh. excited about. Everyone's been Ooh. talking about this for a while. It's very exciting. Uh, I, fe- I figured out how to get a GoPro. Uh, I wanted to mount it on the inside of the pinball machine. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Uh, that would be cool, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> too much. Okay. It's just too much. It's, it's just like, it seems super cool. But it also seems like a super bad idea, especially when this thing's like on loaner to me. So like, yeah, oh, maybe not. How about like a how you about know? like a head like a GoPro on your head or something so I can see what you're like. I want to know how to play pinball, so I kind of wanted to know where you're looking at the table the whole time. Do you follow Point the ball? Point of view pinball. Yeah. Do you do you look at the the bumpers? Do you most of the time? Are you following the ball? Like, what is that? You know, Vinny, mm-hmm. I gotta say, yeah, 
sometimes full of, you're full you're a real ideas. you're a real you're a real wise ass and sometimes <laughs> sometimes you got like real you just like don't realize how condescending and terrible you're being sometimes uh-huh. but that was such a thoughtful and appreciative uh-huh. question i yes man that that is cool that Thank was not where for, i thought that was going yeah i, did I, don't, I still don't there. believe that jeff feels that way <laughs> i could i could turn it around but I'm, gonna, I, I'm gonna go and say that Vinny, i think that is a great idea because know. yes the biggest problem i think the biggest barrier to entry with people when they play pinball is like what am i even fucking doing yeah like what do i even do am i getting and set up is this a <laughs> should i be ready just stay with me here right. stay with me here um you're right that would be super cool i just don't think it makes sense now with mm. like what am I gonna do? Wear a fucking miner's GoPro helmet on and like I I'm just what are we what are we I, I'm with you like the uh, you know watching where a player's eyes look is important and like I've noticed the better I get at pinball, the less I even look at the flippers because I'm like, oh I just know what these what these balls are gonna do. Wow. If that is oh, you know what these balls are gonna do, you know what I'm saying? No, yeah, you know I, I'm saying? I have to go to your only again. I, I really just out. walk into a few things proudly, but I still walk right into it. So anyway, mm-hmm. um I think what I'm gonna wind up doing is I'm gonna put the GoPro um mount like right below the flippers. So you have like this huge fisheye wide angle lens looking up at the play field. Oh, that's cool. I think that might be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, and, and also, if I had if I had the GoPro attached to my forehead, hmm. a I would look like a schmuck. Yeah. B, that's um, the point. That's the point. I, it would have to have. What's that? That's the point. That's what I was getting at. I just wanted to see right. with the yeah, GoPro yeah. helmet. Yeah, you want to get there. <laughs> uh, but like, but like, uh, you know, you would need a wire attached to your head, and it's just not. You know, just not what I want. It's not what I want to do. That's not the space. You're, that's not what you're after. No wires. Space, no wires. So I think it's already this like convoluted rat's nest of, of you know, wiring and circuitry and whatnot. But I think it's going to be super rad uh, to have like a little corner cam of like that, you know, real close up shot. So long story short, yes, we're going to be streaming again. <laughs> Sunday. Sunday at eight o'clock. Sunday, sure. Sunday, Sunday. Hey, Abby and Alex, I gave I gave Jeff um, uh, CMS access. Yeah, uh, what? Oh, no. so, uh, I'm inside oh, all your shit now. Yeah, he oh, I don't even you have all that. my videos for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can do anything you want. You think I'm cool. condescending? Condescending's not the right <laughs> word. That's such a mean word. You're still hung up on that, bro. Oh, that patronizing, maybe. Okay, I'm definitely patronizing a bit, but condescending. Well, I feel is so like what's the difference between condescending and patronizing? I, I feel like kind of condescending is like uh, I feel like patronizing is like fun. yeah, yeah, Jeff, yeah, okay, your pinball stuff is fun, yeah, that's good stuff. Oh. And, and like treating you like a child, and condescending is like just mean spirited. Condescending I is. I feel like, well, like I don't know. I always use them. Yeah, They're yeah. I feel like patronizing is talking you down. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. I think everyone's mm. right except for Vinny. But you know, like, <laughs> see, that's that's kind of like that's kind of condescending a little bit. Yeah, yeah kinda, look, yeah, I just doesn't feel so good when it's thrown right back at you, does it? No, it no, makes it you doesn't. feel better. It's like the depositing checks in the bank. Then I can like you know, like when the when the till's empty, I can't give them out to Jeff. Then I start feeling bad. But as long as he keeps filling the well back up, uh, I could draw from it. <laughs> Okay, enough with these analogies. We're all over the place. No, that was, the that, was really, that was really pretty scattershot. Yeah, that was that was my bad. Should we take a uh, a break? A yeah, break. Let's do it. Uh, or anything else, Jeff? You want to get? You got anything else you've been playing? Uh, um, I I mean to play a lot of stuff. Uh, people have been talking about that moving out game. Have you seen that? I've seen it. I haven't oh, played it. Oh, I've heard about it. Yeah, I've yeah. heard about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, they reached out and I and I I I'm gonna try and introduce my kid to it. I think that's something he would like, especially the fact that it's couch co-op. It's um, kind of like an overcooked type thing, but you're like movers, furniture movers. Yeah, you're like movers with little regard for like valuables. So oh, hell yeah, that's, that's any mover. I'm into. Yeah, movers. Is Honestly, I've been <laughs> I have been playing. A, it's for everything. I think it's on everything. We have been playing a lot of Spyro, and I gotta say, like, I think we're just about to finish the first the first one and that game's all right i mean it's like painfully um like you know saccharine and you know a little too cutesy for my taste but like it's fun and it's and it's Mm -hmm. and it's um, it's not really challenging but it's it's colorful enough and i think they just did a really good job with the remake so Um, good hopefully hopefully two and three yeah i hope i never played them when i was younger but hopefully two and three are a little more involved Hmm. Uh, i think they are 
because the, like all you really do, you don't really have to like do a lot to progress in this one. You just sort of like make your way through these, you know, worlds and then you, you collect dragons, but it doesn't even seem to be like that necessary. But um, hopefully there's a little more weight in two and three, but he's super into it. So once we latch onto something that he's, that he's psyched about, uh, we're going to see it all the way through. So I'm pumped. Noise. Rocket League yeah. still? No, he doesn't really mess around with that too much. I mean, it's kind of like it's just passe for him now, you know. Mm. Like he's just totally beyond it. He's kind of like this expert. So <laughs> why do that? But uh-huh. um, but yeah, I'm always looking for like something to challenge him because I will say this. I ha- and I know I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent here, but like it's not a concern of mine. But I'm noticing that like he he prefers to watch me play now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i'm not saying that's a bad thing but i i want to encourage him to grab the controller too and he would do he he does that for dangerous driving which he still plays a lot he was doing it a lot for rocket league um but i want him to i want him to want to play he tried to do with human fall flat but that's a complicated game yes. um control wise so maybe with spiral which is not that complicated we can make it happen i think the toughest thing with him is is also that right stick camera is just you know oh to, yeah to break through the barrier of like of, of putting your uh, of wrapping your your fragile little little mind around what it is to be like a 3d roman camera that's a tough thing i know i know people my age who still can't do it so yeah. i got to um i gotta i gotta sneak all those skylanders out of here and uh you gotta come pick them up or i gotta come to your house yeah. But once not, this quarantine is just, over, you're just doing like a midnight dumpster drop of your <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, you gotta come back to my house yeah. again and I'll, I'll give them to you. I'm no, I, yeah, no, sure, sure. I'll take your crap. I'll take your useless plastic crap. What are you talking about? Sure. He's gonna love Skylanders. My kids, but my kids still, uh, my kids still like it. So uh, I thought we were done. We were trying to, we were trying to put them in a box and they, uh, they magically got yanked back out. But um, those are all yours. Oh. I don't want to steal them from your kids. So I can't believe you're trying to steal them from the kids. You know, let let them play with it until they're done. Do you still have the PJ Max Max headquarters? I do. It's in the (laughs) we keep it in the garage. Yeah, don't. And we really like it. Well, like we really, yeah, we really like it. Yeah, it's he uses it like a water toy a little bit. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a fun one because it's got like different levels. It's a little headquarters for PJ Masks uh, toys. What are PJ Masks? They're like French superheroes. No, they're, they're oh, French. Cool. They're not French. I think they're. I think it's a French. Well, I think it's a French show. Oh, maybe. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe. Well, no, it's they're French Canadian. Greg, is it French Canadian? Oh, oh, but yeah. No one. Google. No, no French, French person. No French person has ever been named Greg. No, there's no way. I've been watching hockey for a very long time. No French Canadian. <laughs> Never happened. Named Greg. Never happens. Um, yeah, I didn't realize it was French Canadian. That's interesting. PJ Masks, I, it, that whole thing bothers me. I don't know what those. You don't like PJ do. Masks? It's just like, uh, I'm kind of with you. Like, like, even Paw Patrol bothers me. I like Blaze. Mm-hmm. I like, um, you know, my, my, he's starting to really love Peg and Cat, which is all like math based fun stuff. That shit's awesome. Um, Stinky and then, Ollie? You know, Stinky and Dirty. Stinky and Dirty. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. What's stinky like, and dirty? It's like stinky a, and dirty is like a dump truck and a tractor who just oh, look that like rules. shit and they're like best friends. Yeah. I feel that like we were supposed awesome. to take a I feel like we were supposed to take a break half an hour ago. Oh wait, we didn't we didn't take a break. I thought we were just talking off. No, it no. Is oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh we'll be right we'll be right back. We'll be back. Uh this will be uh if you're watching this live, probably about a five or five or or so. Fiver. And then uh and then we'll be back uh in a little bit. See uh, oh I gotta play the music, the outro music. Hold on. Let me find that. Here we go. If you wanted, uh, also, if you wanted to know what we talk about during the break, there it is. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> talk about kid shows. Here we go. After a little. And we're back. Perfect each time. Segway in, segue out. Never a misstep here, man. Every time I do it, every time. Um, Jeff, Abby, Alex, how is everybody? Vinny. Good break. Good break. Yeah, yeah. That was I had a, a good break. Nice break. That was yeah. a really nice break. Put on a jacket. Put up my hair. Oh. Went to the bathroom. Can't nice. complain. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready to keep the show going. Turn with the uh, back alert. You have a nice candle. What do you? What do you? What scent are you rocking over there? If those watching live or in video, we could see the uh, Yankee the candle. Scent? 
It's uh, the scent. I uh, genuinely just smells like cologne. Uh-huh. What kind yeah. of like Dracar Noir or like a like a Hugo Boss? Curve? Or like an Axe body spray? No, 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 it's like a Polo Sport, Ralph Lauren Polo okay. Sport. Do you wear cologne? Wow, so you you've worn cologne before. I've I've smelled you. You've worn cologne. <laughs> <laughs> you wait. You've worn it before, haven't you? I, I've definitely yeah, been I, like. You smell nice today. What are you What are you wearing? What's your What's I'll your brand? I, I don't know. I don't know. Like. What cologne is at is, is cologne is bad or not? Mm. But I've I, any yes, I wear cologne. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting! And every day, every day. Well, not in six weeks, but <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I I think it's something I inherited. The very few things I inherited from my father <laughs> that like there's just something about dad going leaving for the day, mm. giving him a kiss goodbye, and he just smells real nice. So what's your and, what's your uh, uh, what's your musk? Um, I used to be a huge Issy Miyake fan. Okay. Um, who? But I Issy know who Miyake. Issy Miyake is. Yeah. Who, but I now, that. is that a perfume he's a manufacturer? He's like a designer. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, but lately I've been like um an Aqua uh, Aqua Di Gio. Ooh, the, that sounds Who fancy. who makes that? It's like a fancy company that makes that. Ralph. See, Lauren. I know. I know that we are maturing as a group because we just let Jeff talk about sniffing his good smelling dad and we it's just totally let that go. Yeah, <laughs> we just let up. that go oh, and let it slide. It's a love joke. I think it's nice. I don't think people should feel weird about having a nice, intimate, inappropriate relationship with their parents. It's yeah, totally. Everyone, you. everyone, everyone when this Jeff... is over, when this is over, go sniff your dad. Yeah, Jeff <laughs> has an OnlyFans account with his dad and I support that. Um, uh, we, have a, we have a smell-based relationship. They just and... sniff each other. Uh, yeah, it's it's Armani, but it's like there's something about it. I just I just I I very much enjoy that. Mm. And that's that's the thing I I do. I I wear cologne. I like, yeah, no, there it is. I kind of I, I kind of want to start wearing a scent. Maybe when this yeah. is over. It's also I think because have y'all seen Killing Eve? Because like one character yeah. is like very chic in it. And she wears perfumes and like has like high end clothes and all stuff. And I'm like I'm gonna be so chic by the end of this. So now I'm like maybe I'll get perfume. Also, she's an assassin and like a psychopath, but <laughs> very cool otherwise. But that's maybe cool. want to get into like a good smell you know i think to be a good assassin you need to smell good because you need to be able to yeah. entice you know your yeah. targets in you need to lull them into a false sense of security before murdering I, for, I, look scent, scents are associated with memory that's right. without a yeah. doubt it is there is something uh real like i remember uh, a couple years ago i got a whiff of perfume uh-huh. like in a mall or something and it was the same scent as like the first girl i ever kissed hmm. and like that your wife was like this <laughs> that was like this time travel <laughs> like thing that brought me back like 20 years to 25 years and it was crazy i like i like almost had to sit yeah. down in the mall i was like oh I, yeah yeah oh, that's oh. happened to me before you know, like, <laughs> all the factory stuff is no joke like it really penetrates. yeah i know it really does uh, so yeah and and uh, there is like a, a a definite like positive memory i have of you know of my dad and his cologne and even to yeah. this day when i see him he's you know just this smelly bastard so it's, it's <laughs> same the know. same scent same cologne no, he's he switches it up a lot. My, okay, so my dad doesn't do anything in like moderation. Like he'll get into cologne and then buy like ninety bottles of different colognes and be like, oh. "Hey, you know." But so uh, but but then point, just wear like two of them. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you just have to sit there. So to that point, uh, I feel like the the scent thing for me was always the thing. Like, oh, if I'm gonna wear a cologne, I have to b- find one and then use it for the rest of my life because that's gonna be the olfactory thing like oh if somebody's gonna remember me and uh, people won't recognize you anymore if you change it that's right they won't know who i am it's my identity uh in high school this is gonna sound very uncool old spice was not cool i don't think it is cool now but they they before they did their uh terry cruz campaign they were very much not cool um and i but i just yeah it was like a dad dad yeah it was definitely a dad thing but i think i thought it was I had that same thing, Jeff, where like I associated like that Old Spice smell with yeah. like, uh, you know, it's a very clean smell. And I think my grandfather wore it. So I wore Old Spice for a while. Um, and then Curve was the one I, I wound up Ooh, settling on. Liz Claiborne. Yeah. And I, and I like that one. So I've got like the same bottle from, you know, 1999 because I wear the um, little green one, right? The, the, is it green? I, I don't know. Maybe. It's yeah. See on, I was, oh, right. Sorry. Colors. But no, that's um, <laughs> I, I used to wear Curve. Curve is a big high school cologne. 
For me, the high school one was like Drakhor Noor. Do you remember that? They still make that? Oh, and and Cool Water. Oh, you mean Drakhor (laughs) Noor. Yes, I do. I didn't mean both (laughs) of the And Cool Water and Hugo Boss were all the big ones at the time. Wow. Dude, what about about CK1? Remember CK1? Yes, for sure. How big of a deal that was? Are we just remembering (laughs) sense now? Is that what we're doing? (laughs) Alex, yes. That's Listen, I have a doing. question. Slow news day. So <laughs> we're gonna get do you have this. to like pair your deodorant with your body soap and de- or, and like you know what I mean? Like is the body soap and deodorant does it have to pair with the cologne? I don't think so. I don't think I don't, okay. I don't think I so. use old spice deodorant, by the way. They yeah. don't make women's deodorant that's not antiperspirant. Really? They don't make women's deodorant. It's so deodorant hard to find. They only make anti- it if it's in the like natural ones, and those like I get an allergic reaction every time. Uh, old spice yeah. does it though. So they make hmm. a sorry they make a deodorant that's not an antiperspirant, or they yes. make it. Okay. So I have Old Spice deodorant. Gotcha. I don't want an antiperspirant. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah, you don't want that. That's no. okay, but that's like all they have yeah. for women. Right. I'm just gonna be real with you. Like I've been using Old Spice deodorant, cologne, aftershave, all there that shit go. since I was like they're like 13. Like I, I no fucking shame about it. Like that shit smells no. a okay. It does the fucking job. Like who cares? Like <laughs> it's, that that is my attitude about that shit. I always just like their little bottle, that little like like a whale tooth <laughs> bottle that you just gotta like kind of like, yeah. you know, shake out onto yeah. your hand. Yeah, I always like that little bottle. Anyway, we've got more news than what we smell like. Uh, oh, <laughs> I, I did not have recommend a perfumes to me, people. I want to get a good one. Uh, my wife was making uh, perfumes for a while, like essential really? oh, stuff. Yeah, she went cool. to class. Okay, uh, a lot of like. I'll look up her Etsy. And- yeah, <laughs> that's right. Like her, you can you can find my woodworking and her perfumes and her uh, <laughs> yeah. her uh, crocheting. Uh, Alex, you pulled some stories here today for the news. What have we got? Uh, the news is slim pickings this week, but, uh, before we get into the stuff that I pulled, Abby, you wanted to talk about that animal crossing update. So I say we leave with that because that is the only good thing going on right now. (laughs) Okay. Well, we talked about the art. So red, so we're basically, they added a bunch of stuff today, um, for May day, which is basically their earth day. It's like, it goes through like May 4th, I think, which is just like incentives to like plant trees. They also included bushes. Cause they added Leif leaf. I'm not sure how to say it. Leaf. Who was like a character. He's like, um, like a sloth that was in the other games. He would like hang out in your shop once you upgraded it. Uh, but now he stands in the town plaza, just like a lot of the other ones with a little cart. You can buy bushes and some of the flower seeds that you don't normally get into your store. Oh um so he's he great up? so far he also will like buy your weeds for more money what when does he show up you should i'm i had him today so i'm guessing oh. if you don't have him today you probably will it's probably like a once a week thing like anybody okay. else um so he is a part of it also the museum will be expanded which is very exciting um and they are going to expand for a art section which we talked about earlier with crazy red mm. um but they are bringing Red back. It looks like Red has a permanent store. So, like, from what I've seen, don't quote me on that, but from what I've seen online, it looks like it has a permanent store with, like, a symbol on the map and everything. It's on that, like, small um, uh, like small beach at the top of your island. The secret um, beach. The secret beach, yes. So that's exciting. That's fun. Um, also, what else is new? I'm trying to remember. So they made some tweaks here and there to some smaller stuff. Like, so the yes. interest rate apparently for your uh, monthly uh, bank account interest uh, is has been lowered because they, a lot of people have been perhaps blowing through aspects of the economy in this video game. <laughs> and that's one of maybe one of the few things where they can tweak the numbers to maybe not make it so that people are making millions and millions of bells I, all the time. You know, I didn't, I feel like I didn't get a lot of good interest from it, but they did send me a rug that looks like a money bag, which yes. I, appreciate it what a scary uh, thing. what a terrible thing we lowered your interest rates I here's this rug it. it's the worst it's also just it's like, a like a letter from my bank yes that was the thing it really did feel like a letter from my bank of like oops we accidentally gave you too much money last month here's 30 dollar <laughs> fee you know what i mean yes, but uh-huh. you can like get a discount at this restaurant you don't need at also anyway the, the other um, uh, email i got from tom nook was we've updated our privacy and uh uh our, our terms of service terms and conditions <laughs> yeah terms and conditions you can no longer sue me. Oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> yes um another thing they added so this i think will be coming in june um i forget the names of the llamas that used to run the like customization store mm. the like blue and pink llamas um I anyway they're that. like a married couple but they for june if you go to harv's island which is like the weird photography guy you can like pose with them in like these marriage pictures to celebrate their anniversary and then you get like special merit like wedding items basically um which seems like a Wait. weird thing it, it makes me what 
Are you entering their marriage? Are you becoming a part of their marriage? What's happening? <laughs> you are taking photos of their marriage. You're like a hired photographer. And okay. you know what? Who knows what happens after the photo's mm. taken? That's up to you. Yeah. But what, what, what happens on Harv's Island stays on Harv's <laughs> exactly. Island. Exactly. It does make me very curious, though, if they are just going to have like some fan favorite characters or characters who are in the other games that probably aren't going to have a shop in this game. If they're just going to be like, well, throw them on Harv's mm. Island um and that's how we can introduce them also honestly this has made me i think that they added this i this is pure speculation on my end but like as much of a bummer as it is i've been seeing so many posts online being like my had to cancel my wedding so we got married in animal crossing and it makes me think that they like june is wedding season they know people can't go out and get married let's give them wedding items an excuse to give them wedding items mm. which those, is like those th- those weddings are not legally binding that is not a real <laughs> wedding you can't you can't, you can't Look, show someone of pictures papers. of your animal crossing wedding and they say we're married now thousand bells they're married yes. um <sighs> anyway that's i don't know that's my pure speculation but i wouldn't i don't know it, it seemed like a weird thing to have just like random wedding stuff <laughs> um i'm very curious though because i feel like they keep having all of these extra characters who don't have full shops so i'm curious if it's a thing that's like once you get them into your town your existing shops will upgrade or if you're going to build them new ones or if they will just always be like a rotating cart like is leaf just going to be a rotating cart forever Mm. or will he eventually become part of nooks and be there every day like i think that labelle who is one of the sisters of the, the sable sisters i think eventually she like moves into their shop but I don't know. I'm just very yet. curious what they're going to do for that. And stuff like, you know, there's also characters like um, the Brewster who made the coffee in the other games. I would think that would yeah. be like a museum expansion or something, but there hasn't been much indication for it yet. So I'm just really curious. I don't know. It's interesting to see them like adding these characters kind of with updates later, like sprinkling them in throughout the game. Like, what does that mean for the other characters? Mm-hmm. Is that a thing that's like, I still haven't done the right things to unlock them? Or is it a thing that's like, they need to upgrade the game to include them? Is this the first Animal Crossing that's come out, uh, excepting uh, the, the mobile one, which you know was very much its own thing? But it, it, I don't remember in New Leaf, they didn't really do this kind of rollout for that game, right? Like, is this the first one that is sort of operating like a live service game in the way that like live service games will, you know, roll out that kind of content that way? It feels like it for me. Like, I really don't remember any kinds of, like, any of these sort of upgrades um, in New Leaf. You know, all the holidays were the holidays. They stayed in place. Maybe, you know, certain things would update. But I feel like all of the characters were potentially unlockable from the start. Like, if you time traveled, if you did whatever, you could get those characters. Right. So, it's interesting. Um, I don't hate it. But it just makes me curious. Like, I want to know what else they're rolling out. I want to know if there's other stuff that is... Like, what is unlocked behind, like, I can actually do this in the game right now versus, like, we are going to add this to the game later. I need to know if they're going to change up the stock market algorithm and (laughs) (laughs) destroy all the... (laughs) I've got the crop report, and I just need to know for next week if uh, orange prices are going to... Orange futures are going to be okay. Yeah, nice. How, we, we don't do that movie enough. Uh, trading we always places. do Ghostbusters. I feel like we trading do trading places. places for a while. What what is there to do? What, we we do uh, PCP. Turn Android the machines us. back on. Uh, you yeah. know what Turn the stuff, machines <laughs> back on. You know what this stuff does to kids? Uh, one dollar. Right? Um, one dollar. One dollar. I guess. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we don't do Dan Aykroyd's Jamaican accent. <laughs> no, nope. we don't, no. That did, that That's the one well. part we don't yeah. do. <laughs> no, that one. That one. Yeah. That one stayed there. Um. Alex, yes. Take us down the. Take us into the news. The rest. All of the right. News. Uh, so in the non-COVID news-related section, uh, here's a weird one that I'm not going to pretend to be a full expert on what's going on here, but I'll tell you what I know. Uh-huh. Uh, so at some point during the course of this week, uh, there was a reported leak uh, of the source code uh, for Team Fortress Two and uh, Counter Strike Go. Now. The information around this is the the leak itself is source code from the game going back to 2017. It is not like the most updated version of the code. Uh, The way that it was leaked, it appears to involve some, uh, would you believe, scene drama uh, involving people in various Valve-related discords. Uh, I don't know the specifics of that stuff, and I would not care to speculate on why any of this happened. But uh, what 
has happened is that it sent a lot of people into a panic, at least for a couple of days, because there were a lot of people w- worried that like this code being out there would result in a bunch of hackers being able to do ill shit mm-hmm. uh, with the, with the games, you know, loading, you know, uh, remote code executions and things like that onto other people's games. So yes. Valve has come out. They have talked about this and they said, as far as they are aware, nothing involving uh, the game, those games being played on Valve servers should be affected by this on account of it is older source code is not necessarily the stuff that is running the game these days. But there are also have been like, you know, uh, accounts of people saying, oh, no, like it, I loaded up the game and it did something fucking weird. Hmm. They could be playing on custom servers. It could not really be true. I don't know. Uh, but it seems like no one really knows exactly what's going on here, except that this old code is out there and uh, nobody seems very happy about it. And it could potentially, according to some of these reports, not according to me, affect other source-based games, like Gary's Mod. Yes, it could. That was on the source engine. It's very confusing it when could. you say source code and source code. The source code for source. Uh, yeah, it's it's a... It's a weird thing, and you know, it, it like I said, the whole reason this seems to have happened it, it can be traced back to a particular Discord where some some ill shit seems to have happened. Okay. But yeah, I don't know. It just seems like a real weird one, and I don't really know what to make of it because I don't necessarily play either of those games. Hmm. But you know, Valve at least is out there saying like, "Hey, if you're playing these games on our servers, you shouldn't run into an issue." But you know, take that with as many grains of salt as you need to. Okay, mm. developing. Interesting. Thanks. Developing story. Develop developers developing story. Alex, what's next? Uh so now we're gonna get into the COVID stuff. Okay. Uh you may remember that GameStop has been uh struggling through all of this. Uh they were struggling before all of this and then have extra been struggling during all of this. Um so they're continuing to shift their their business plans and making decisions uh to try and stay in business as long as humanly possible. Mm-hmm. Uh so on the the more like okay yeah you probably should do this side of things. Uh they are the the CEO of GameStop George Sherman will apparently be taking a temporary base salary reduction of 50% while uh their chief financial officer uh and the rest of their executive leadership will be taking a reduction of 30%. Uh, they have also furloughed a number of employees, I believe. Uh, and then on the other side of things, as some places are starting to open up uh, in Europe and also maybe prematurely in the United States, <laughs> uh, they are currently making plans to open up in some of those locations, including South Carolina and Georgia in the coming hmm. weeks. Harm. Harm. <laughs> it's really the only way I know how to respond to that, too, because I get it. They are in desperation mode right now, but also, do we really need GameStop's opening back up until we know things are a little more right? Solid? Also, I, hearing I'll say, how I'll they no. handled things, yeah, and hearing how they handled things before with staff, as far as like not giving them the proper things to clean and like making them keep you know these like touch and play kiosks out. I don't expect them to look out for their staff during this. No, not especially. They have not really uh, given any indication that they care about much at this point, other than just trying to keep their head above water. Yeah. Um. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, I. Yeah. I want to say I want the GameStop employees to get paid and have jobs, but uh, I don't. Of course. Want that ill shit happening. Uh, yeah. So, also some of that stuff sometimes. I mean, listen. I don't know the inside baseball here on that game stop but uh it sounds like they're the leadership is taking uh reductions in cash payments right that's their salary not necessarily their dividends or or stock prices or their comp- i think there is some there, there are some reductions being made kind of across the board okay. but i wouldn't say that they are necessarily like going to be hurting super bad salary wise as far as that stuff goes yeah I don't know, i'm trying to undermine it because maybe it is it, maybe it yeah. is the thing but like sometimes you make like i make ten dollars a month i'm the ceo of gamestop but actually my from stock stuff i make four four point seven million I'm going to say that right now, if you are relying on GameStop stock, you are not making $4.7 <laughs> yeah, But you do have a market on that toilet paper. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I hope everybody who works there is, is doing fine. Yeah. Uh, Seriously. All right. Let's move on to the uh, next story. Uh, so the, the last bit of COVID related news here. So events obviously have been canceled. E3's canceled. GDC was canceled. Gamescom is canceled. But what about PAX? What about yeah. PAX? PAX, what about is a, PAX? PAX is a great place. Uh, hey, before everybody in the world was getting sick, 
Uh, we were in a crisis. Pax, there was Pax. Uh, where, yeah. yeah, you could get sick at Pax. You could get sick at Pax. I'm not trying to make light of what's going on now, but uh, what about Pax, Alex? Well, as you know, uh, Pax East did happen this year, and that was before things really got out of hand in the United States. So it's it's kind of understandable that maybe they didn't pull the trigger on that one. Uh, but the, the Pax West, the main Pax, Pax Prime, if you will, uh, is happening presumably September mm-hmm. 7th through uh, September 4th through 7th this year. Uh, now, given the timetables that we are currently looking at and the, the wildness of the situation as it concurrently evolves, uh, that maybe seems unlikely to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that would just be the, yeah. the safe way to a safe thing to assume. Well, PAX doesn't necessarily want you to assume that right now okay. because uh, they updated uh, via Twitter and also on their website they, they said on Twitter, we've gotten a lot of questions from fans and want to let everyone know that as of right now, we still plan on welcoming everyone home to PAX West on Labor Day weekend in 2020. Exclamation point. No! Do you see uh, Danny's reply to this? Yes! <laughs> Danny's reply, Danny O'Dwyer says, see you at the Cheesecake Factory, accidentally coughs on all cheesecakes. Oh, gross. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> I got a laugh out of that one. <laughs> here's here's the thing. I I get it. You don't want to cancel an event like this until the last possible second. You actually have to. But at the same time, people got to make travel plans. People got to yeah. do things. And if you're like goading people into the idea of oh maybe this event will still happen and don't cancel your travel plans, that feels shitty in yeah, a way. It's wrong. That, it's wrong. It's wrong. Have they? And sold, you know, have they sold tickets? Uh, I believe they had been selling tickets. Yeah, yeah. Is it because mm. you know? Uh, can I go? Can I go to PAX and buy a ticket? I I, I don't know for certain, but I, I <laughs> believe they start selling those tickets pretty early. So, okay. uh, but regardless, I mean, it's just with all these other events canceling, and it just it, it feels maybe just a tad irresponsible. Like, I mean, at, at this point. If I, if I could read another statement from uh, a major event, that a uh, major gathering, if you will. Uh, oh, I know that, what this is. That, that, that goes on every year. Uh, this, this comes from our, uh, our good friends, the Insane Clown Posse. Uh, this is the message they posted up today about the gathering of Juggalos, which takes place just one month prior to PAX West. Uh-huh. Psychopathic records in the Insane Clown Posse live for the Juggalo family. <laughs> For 20 consecutive years, the gathering of Juggalos has been the biggest family reunion on the planet, generating untold levels of freshness for thousands and thousands of attending <laughs> Juggalos from all walks of life <laughs> all around the world. I didn't know that they used freshness. That <laughs> yeah. doesn't seem like a term I'd expect from them. They, they're they all about that freshness. Well, it sounds uh, like things are going to be great. Well, with the global pandemic that is now affecting us all, we are dedicated first and foremost to the safety and health of our family. That said, at this juncture, it is with a heavy heart that we announce that due to the COVID-19 outbreak, we have no choice but to postpone the gathering until next year. This is not only a call we had to make, but one the owners of the Nelson Ledges Quarry Park, where the gathering was to take place, regrettably had to make as well. With tens of thousands of deaths due to the COVID-19 outbreak, we can't possibly, in good conscience, even consider trying to put on a gathering during these difficult times. Aside from the serious health concerns, there are numerous other factors that have destroyed any possibility of the gathering taking place this year. The entire music industry is at a dead halt due to the quarantine, and this, along with the uncertainty of how things will eventually pan out, has made it impossible to move forward with a 2020 gathering of the Juggalos. That aside, the bottom line is that we simply refuse to risk even one (laughs) One juggalo life by hosting a gathering during these troubling times. In closing, we want everyone to heed the words of Fred Fury and Flip the Rat. Be safe, watch your step, and take it easy. You can't replace what you mean to our team without you. Tell me where the fuck we'd be. (laughs) Wait, wait, I kind of lost at the last part there. (laughs) But uh, uh, so the hatchets are just running inside. That is a... We will endure this together as a family, and the gathering of the Juggalos will return in 2021 stronger, bigger, and better than ever. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> cool. Is that written out somewhere? Yes, that is on the ICP Twitter account. That was the whole uh, message. The Juggalos are being 10 times, 100 times more responsible in this than the people running packs. Uh, That's what I'm saying. It sucks. Everything sucks, Alex. It all sucks. I want developers I to get their games out there. I want people to be able to yeah. get by in this it's it's all it's all crappy 
It's all bad. It's all I badness. don't want PAX to be canceled, but what are we doing? I what know. are we doing? Yeah. It's all it's all bad. I want GameStop employees to get a paycheck. I want people to be able to work. Yes. Yeah. It all is is terrible. Um I don't I don't know. I don't know. I mean I kinda know. I mean also <laughs> we need to not be all spreading viruses around. Uh that's the thing I know. Whoop good point. Whoop, Vinny. Whoop whoop whoop. <laughs> whoop whoop. Uh, 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 juggalos. Why did this happen? <laughs> How are we looking to the know. Juggalos for guidance? Dude, the Juggalos are an unfairly maligned group. They are, <laughs> they, they are, they are truly are a family. They stick together. They are loyal, maybe to a fault. But you know what? Bless them. Bless their hearts. I hope all the Juggalos stay safe out there. I hope everybody stays safe out there. Alex, do we have, uh, yeah. we have more news? Yeah, I wanted to end this on a good note. This is a okay. real quick one. Just since all the news. News is bad. Here's a piece of news that's not bad. Red Dead Redemption 2 coming to Xbox Game Pass in May. <gasps> yep. <laughs> yes! <laughs> now, ah, I'm going to play again! It is oh. only coming to console Game Pass, but still, that's pretty cool. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's oh, pretty cool. Oh, because they have their own thing now on the PC. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. There's, yeah. A, there's Rockstar Steam now, whatever yeah. it's called. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> Rockstar, not Game Pass. Uh, man i'm psyched for this rock and roll i want to see the beautiful xbox one x red dead so me you too a, i i think i might actually start playing that game again when yes. that comes out yes. um you had it on ps4 maybe Eddie? i'll make an evil arthur um yes i did had it on ps4 played a lot of it um honestly i think it was one of my most it was definitely my most played game in the year it came out and then i think last year it was also still one of my most played games <laughs> i put a shocking amount of time into it <laughs> uh I, i'm gonna say they probably do not allow you to bring your online stuff on cross-platform i'm gonna that's gonna be oh i guess. wish that'd be cool that would be oh yeah you're doing a lot of the online stuff yeah because I, I wonder if like any gold or progress you've made would come be a unified online account i don't know i have not looked into it at all but i would, I would be a nice surprise uh bleh. not not on pc game pass i mean i get it but whatever whatever that's where i want to that's where i'd want to see it again pretty pretty pc uh is that it for the news alex that is all i was able to find all right all right uh well boy that was i'm kind of a little bummed and depressed alex about not your fault uh just like it sucks like i said like it's terrible like, you know, Vinny, uh, if you yeah, need I, yeah. If you need to feel better, just think about all the healthy juggalos that are staying home and will not be, you know, will not be trapped in a, let's say, a gigantic disease vector uh, in the middle of the Midwest. Yeah. Where where do they hold that? They used to hold it at this place called Cave in Rock, Illinois, uh, really which is know. really in the middle of nowhere in Illinois. I don't we know where this place they do it now is. On the ready. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, we'll get into emails. Um, um, we're gonna we we'll take another little quick break. Yeah, yeah, we'll take another yeah. little yes. quick break. Yeah, okay, sounds break. good to me. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna get all uh, I'm gonna get all showbiz and excited. Yeah, we're gonna have another <laughs> sip of coffee. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this one gonna around. Do some <laughs> coke. <laughs> That's what showbiz excited means. That's <laughs> whoop whoop. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Let me get my whoop whoop on. Uh, let me get the music here for a second. Here we go. Stay tuned. We'll be back very soon. Should I should I be hearing the music? Wait, did you guys not hear music? No. No. Uh, do you want to hear it this time? I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, it's up to you. There we yeah, go. I don't care. I do. Here we go. Well, because I you think the audience also didn't hear no, the music. If you don't hear it, then uh, it's only for me. Ready? <laughs> oh, ready? Here we go. Yeah. If you want to hear the music, let me hear you say whoop whoop. Whoop whoop! whoop. No, you tell me twice. Just not. All right, here we go. Back again. Guess who's back? That Beat Beast cast crew. What? It's, it's, okay. it's me again. Slick. Benny's back. 
Um, okay. Abby, Russell, here we go in the emails. If you get an email, you can send it to beastcast at giantbomb.com. That is beastcast at giantbomb.com. Abby, you've picked some of these emails this week. Yes. What do we got? I did. Um, let's read this first one. Jeff, will you read this one from Ryan, please? Of course. Of course. Uh, hey, guys. Just wanted to know your all's level of care when it comes to the game clock. Do you care about your playtime at all? If you pause the game for an hour and the clock still runs, do you reset back to an old save just to have better time? Do you feel inferior to your peers if someone beat a game before you? Just curious. Um, so are there still games that like keep the counter running if you like AFK or something? Like I always assume because I mean, like I know for like the switch, it's the system that counts it. So I assume when I like quit out of Animal Crossing and it's just on the loading screen, I assume my system is still counting that. You know what time I mean? Played. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not sure. I think that's uh, probably a very case by case, console by console, game by game thing. I will say this. I don't give a shit about the timer mm -hmm. or like comparing times, but I do give a large shit oh. about the accuracy of said timer. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So like, I like that whole thing with Resident Evil mm -hmm. three, where it was like your game time versus your play time. What the fuck? No, I just want to know how long, how many hours and minutes did I spend in this game? I even respect it if you like eliminate cutscene time or something like that. Sure. Oh, you should, interesting. You should, you should be transparent about that. But <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I think that's a cool thing, and I want to know the most accurate time for my gameplay. Like that's a wow. that's a nice thing that I like to have when I'm when I've completed a game. How long did it take me to do that? I think for me, I'm curious. I'm always curious. Um, like I wish, cause I like seeing it on my switch. I wish the PlayStation had similar tallies just for like a general, how long did you play this game for? I do not give a shit about the accuracy. I assume like seven to 15 hours were spent in idle menus. Um, right. cause that sometimes happens of like, well, I'm done playing this. I'm going to walk away and not close it. <laughs> or, or um, it happens on when we do stuff for the office, say a PC game and we do a quick oh, yeah. look and then suddenly somebody left it on all weekend and it's like 472 yes. hours, but they, but they should totally build that in. Like if you, if you time out on a menu, stop yeah. the count, stop the clock, stop yeah. the clock, stop, stop the, clock. the countdown. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's yeah, it. I don't care to um like compare my time. I don't ever feel like, oh man, they played this game for shorter than me. They must be better. Mm. It's more like, oh, I got more out of this game, you know, or like I just enjoyed it at my pace. I don't really care about comparing unless it's I, I'm more just curious of like, oh, I played, you know, Red Dead for 200 hours. How many hours did you get out of it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's kind of fascinating, but. Well, especially yeah. if it's like there's know. a huge discrepancy. If it's like I, when Abby, yeah. I, I beat Red Dead in four hours. Be like, what? No, yeah, I don't know. Right. Why, what did I yes. do wrong? Well, you're, a, yeah. you're not speed running it for one thing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I will say that the only reason I ever cared about game time, game clock, any of that was that for my years as a reviewer, it was oftentimes good mm. to know what the hour count on a game was generally. Uh, mm. Because that was a piece of information uh, you were more or less required to put in game reviews for a long time. How long uh, is this game, and, Alex? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, I will tell you right now, as a personal judge, uh, I lose time when I play video games. I have no fucking idea how long I have been playing any video game unless there is a number attached to it somewhere in a save file. But otherwise, I just don't care. It is, it's not important to me. Never has been. Oh, wait a second. Okay, cool. hold on. I care about one game time. Alex, how much save okay. time have you put in? Uh, huh. we, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, Alex, I, 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 <laughs> oh, it seems like I, Alex I, is cutting uh, out. Here, I think Alex did is you break him. Alex, uh, Alex is turning. Uh, <laughs> uh, Alex, Alex, <laughs> your, your, oh, your funny. video's fine. Wow, well, Alex is gone. Wow. Oh, I think I recovered. I think I'm okay now. Um, he said, "I remember him saying he said like eighty thousand hours at one point." <laughs> I think that's right. Uh, yeah, that's an exact uh, number. But there's also a thing like with my Sims saves is I have played Sims on like seven different computers now because mm -hmm. i have to play it for work on all these computers so like my home computer is like 300 hours and my home computer that's a mac is like 100 hours and my like work computer is like 50 hours or whatever like i've played a lot of the sims and it's all i'm not going to tally all those and also 
I left. I played The Sims uh, on Wednesday for work. Uh-huh. Or no, yeah, yesterday. Left, left it up until there now. And I <laughs> turned the computer oh, on and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> hope that's saved. <laughs> and then it happened with me on The Witcher a couple of times. And it's like 175 hours in The Witcher. How did this happen? Uh, naturally. I think the, <laughs> oh, uh, the, still the, open. <laughs> the most I cared about, there's a couple of instances. One was WoW, original WoW, where everybody would be comparing slash played times, right? And it would be like, oh my gosh, 75 days of, of, of WoW time. Uh, that was probably the last time comparing stuff was fun. When I have a lot of hours in something, it's fun for me. Like if I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got 275 hours in like Satisfactory or like, oh, I've got all this time in mm-hmm. Factorio. That's just kind of fun. I'm not trying to compare it. Yeah. Uh, the other things are times when Dan and I were doing uh, This is the Run, we would kind of try and look up uh, on uh, Time to Beat, the site that tells you how long it takes to beat something. Uh, so we oh, generally yeah. know if we had a perfect run, could we fit it into an episode, right? Could we fit, is this going to be an hour and a half to beat? Is if you, if you do beat it, is it 45 minutes? So times were kind of not crucial, but they were a good guideline there. It was fun to see exactly how long people had, not speed runs, but the average time to beat. And then of course my speed running career, uh, I need to right. know um, <laughs> that stuff. So and they're fun. I still, I appreciate them. I'm with Jeff though. Accuracy above all. Give me that accurate mm. count. I want wow. that. I want that count. If we're gonna do it, do it right. Uh, I guess so. I, I guess I really don't care. I just want to know how much time I've sunk into it. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind. Of, I'm also kind of there. Like, uh, like only when it's like above. I'd say I probably start caring when I'm above sixty hours, and then I want to look and be like, oh wow, mm. I've got a lot of time in this. Yeah, uh, I will say, um, Ring Fit Adventure has a very accurate time count where it only counts time <laughs> when you're physically moving. So it's like you'll be working out for like 45 minutes and it's like you had a 15 minute workout. And I'm like, fuck you, Rick and Fit. No, I didn't. I'm sweating. Fuck you. And I hate that. <laughs> it's, it, that is kind of funny. Yes, I do like that. When I was like, five minutes. Ugh. Uh, Abby, what's next? <laughs> I know. Um, okay. Alex, we read this mm-hmm. one from Tyler, please. Sure thing. Tyler says, Dear Beasteries. Ooh, mm. I, I don't like that one. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> if you. If you could have the voice of any video game character narrate your day-to-day actions, who would it be? Me, personally, it would be the narrator from Darkest Dungeon, as long as the occasional uh, Squamous Pelagic Pelagic? Sure. uh, Or other words cropped up. Love all that you do. Keep bombing on. Yeah, the, uh, the narrator from Darkest Dungeon is known for having his thesaurus open at all possible times. <laughs> uh, and he also has a really great commanding voice. Hmm. Who would you do pick for yours? Do you have somebody uh, in your darkest dungeon of a mind? Hmm. <laughs> That's accurate. <laughs> Let me think about that one for a minute. You guys go first. Okay. I think uh- I would maybe want like Gladys. GLaDOS. Oh, that's terrifying. Oh, that's good. That's, yeah, that's I just wanted fun. to antagonize fun. me all day. Can I turn it <laughs> off, though? Because, like, the real answer is none. I don't think I need someone to be like, Abby sat and watched TV for another three hours. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, if you put it like that, I'd probably do, like, the Stanley Parable. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I was uh, thinking whimsical. the uh, Little Big Planet guy. Sure. Oh, that's adorable. Yes, yes uh or just stephen fry does that count <laughs> he was the the you know he was in portal as well uh a very oh, yeah. charming Wait, English... you're, you're stephen, stephen merchant. merchant stephen merchant yeah. sorry yes yeah. not stephen fry um stephen merchant yeah so i guess somebody a very charming english person uh just uh narrate my life please yeah yeah i uh i i think like the nice, like the one I would find most pleasant is uh, one of those Civ narrators, like probably like Sean Bean or something. Oh. Have him just like start throwing like you know, uh, you know, ancient philosophical and like Winston Churchill quotes over every single action of my sure. day, even when it's extremely not appropriate. But honestly, my answer probably it, this feels like cheating is probably actually just the darkest dungeon dude because I would mm. really love to hear that guy just belt out mortality clarified in a single sandwich as I'm like buttering fucking like mustard <laughs> on bread or something like that seems that seems like a good way to live. Who, who did the? Um, do we know who did the narration in the God of War remake? It's like a real like um, 
You mean the the the, the update, the, the reboot, new, not the new the, one? Yeah, yeah. Was it some? Wait, favorite? I don't remember is, narration. Is, is, there is narration. one, isn't there? Uh, I want to say there is, and, and unless I'm mistaken, oh, the old one was Linda Hunt, right? Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Linda that, Hunt was good. Okay, then yeah. maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Then maybe it wasn't in the new one. Then the the all the like the Kratos stood on the 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 precipice. Of, yeah. Okay, that that's was from Linda the originals. Hunt. Okay, I love Linda Hunt. Yeah. Yeah, she also great. looks just like um, the designer in The Incredibles. Yes. <laughs> oh, really? I can never think of that when oh, I see her. <laughs> she looks exactly yeah. like her. Oh, that's funny. I don't know. Yes, I must be thinking <laughs> of the uh, uh, the originals then. Uh, maybe that that's very dramatic. All right. What's next? Okay, Vinny, will you read this one from Chris, please? Sure will. Chris says, are there any jokes or goofs that no matter how often you hear them, Make a laugh out loud every time. Oh wow! Uh, of course, if you uh, if you wheel a bike into a jail cell, I will laugh every <laughs> single time. Uh, there is, uh, is is it corny or is it bad form if I pick something that uh, I was on that makes me laugh every time I see it? Is that is no, it? I think that's fine. Okay, there is that uh, there that I swear that clip of uh, let's watch a pro uh, from a quick look we I did with Brad where. Uh, I was having all that trouble getting in. I can't even remember the game. I was having all this trouble flying the helicopters in this kind of open world game. And then uh, finally, somebody else ran to a helicopter. I was like, all right, Brad, let's just watch this guy do it. Let's watch a pro fly these things. And he just takes off and immediately uh, face plants into a barrel <laughs> oh, and explodes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That still cracks me up every time I watch it. That was, I That's love a that good thing. one. That's pretty good. Um, I think for me, something that tickles me every time no matter the circumstances, no matter the situation, no matter how serious things are, is when someone like says a word funny. <laughs> like if someone mispronounces a word a little bit, I think it's so funny. I don't know why I think it's so funny, but oh, I just, it's just like Abby, so funny. You, have, you, have, you, uh, have you met Will Smith uh, and have you heard him uh, talk about the uh, PC executables on a, on a certain podcast? No. Oh, you no. should find that clip, Abby. It is. It is. A, okay. it, is it sounds exactly in your wheelhouse. If you want to hear uh, one Ryan Davis take Will Smith to task for uh, a pronunciation, <laughs> uh, it is something. I'll, uh, I'll check it out. <laughs> it I'm asking a pronunciation right now, and it is making me smile. <laughs> 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 just, it's making me laugh. Uh, remembering Ryan just cracking up, being like, "That's not a word." <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I also, I mean, less like someone has a different pronunciation and more like someone is trying to say a word and then they fuck up on the way out of their mouth. <laughs> oh, just <laughs> you like know? they know how to do like, it? Yeah, like somebody's like presenting something and then they say like, stored when they need to say score. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to like correct themselves and keep going. Okay, like, it's mouth, slightly different. Your mouth just did the equivalent of like a Jerry Lewis bit where he's like carrying dishes and then falls over and everything falls exactly. down. Exactly. <laughs> done. <laughs> I think it's so funny. And it's like such a not a cool thing to laugh at people for. <laughs> so I really have to like get myself in check every time. But I definitely want to watch the clip. Uh, Backlar, you got something? I'm trying to think. There's definitely stuff. Nothing's popping in my head right now. But besides like very specific um, scenes from movies that I could always just like, hmm. like not even scenes, just like lines. A lot from Wayne's World, a lot from like Wet Hot American Summer, like whenever Chris Maloney is like whispering into um, the, his assistant's ear about Vietnam and shit. Like I just, yeah, it's just kind of lose it. I'm trying to think of something else that that's like more of a goof outside of film, but I'm sure, you know. Rory put in chat my favorite line from Wet Hot, which is I need lube. That whole thing. And then doesn't she like whisper? <laughs> I need lube. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, for sure. And then when she says after, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep, that's right, Rory. Uh, I think I've, I, I've described this one before, and we've had similar questions. There is a scene, is the opening scene from the film Amazon Women on the Moon. Oh, uh, Arsenio Hall is just trying to go about his day, and increasingly terrible pratfalls keep following him. And all throughout that, he keeps getting phone calls, wrong numbers for someone named Thelma. Uh, and by the by the time the scene has reached this crescendo, he has been electrocuted, had things fall on him. It's all been horrible. And he picks up the phone. He's like, ain't no fucking Thelma here. That bitch don't live here. And then he falls out of a window. And that just never, never doesn't make me laugh. Never. Uh, I also 
uh, kind of along with maybe Abby's. I don't know if this is inappropriate, but I love looking at um, <laughs> dorky high school pictures of people I know. Like, uh, like uh, oh, like, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, like a good old, a good, uh, a good young picture. I mean, uh, in our uh, in our corporate directory for people who have been here a long time, there are some. Oh yeah, there are some good pictures of people that are very, <laughs> very young. Oh <laughs> wow! <laughs> Why do you have that Alex on hand? Alex is a good one. Uh, if you're Alex is, right he there. He looks like he came from the Juggalo of it in <laughs> 2002. <laughs> I want uh, to emphasize, I never wore my hair like this. Uh, it was that day. It was that exact what? day that I did it like that for some reason. I don't remember why. Oh, so there it is. And, I also like and, the high eyebrows. Yeah. Um, yeah. My face, I look. it truly looks like a mugshot in my picture. <laughs> I look, is, yes, and it's not I that look old. upset. Yes. <laughs> I know. Uh, like, mine looks fine. It just, I look like I am about to go to prison. Uh, Matt Rory, uh, I think he's, he was the one person I think who's has his updated, but his was so good. Uh, Matt, if you're listening, I got to find that picture. It was so good, but I think it's now updated in the thing. He looked like he was 12. Uh, also, Dave Nolaska's picture, I think he was 12. Uh, yeah, we have some very young pictures. Uh, it's, it's fun. Yes, to, oh my God, Nolaska's, he looks so little. <laughs> it's fun to watch. I feel like Brad looks like a little baby too. Oh yeah, Brad, Brad is good too. Uh, all right, next email. Okay, moving on to, I don't remember who read last, so I'm going to say, Jeff, will you read this one from Adam? Yeah, I'm just like listening to what sounds to be like a huge truck honking its horn. <laughs> I don't hear it. Well, we can't hmm. hear it. Yeah. yeah, all right. Anyway, um, dear Adam. Beasties, it's been an ambition of mine to start collect to start to collect games, consoles, and merch from the past. Uh -oh. I've started a small collection since around 2016, but nothing with any substance. With the lockdown here in the UK and the impromptu and sporadic house rearrangement, I think I'm finally in a place to start collecting. My question is to you. My question is to you, as avid collectors. Where do you start? I'm focusing on the easiest period for me, the PS2 era, focusing on games that mean something to me. Mm. I know there are variations in the quality of what is available. For instance, I picked up Final Fantasy 10, 10, 2, and 12 on the PS2 for 10 pounds just now. I'm also looking at sealed copies on the same games, and I'm weighing up if it's worth looking at more valuable items any hot takes would be appreciated uh thanks Oof. for being the shining lights in this world weird world that's very special oh. thank you for saying that that's from adam in the uk oh man oh, collecting man. games like i have one piece of advice don't do this oh, yeah man. i kind of am there too i think if you you know what if you want to collect something go for it i think i would just re recommend <laughs> Getting something that either you really like the game, so it's neat to have this weird version of it, or get something that looks good on a shelf. Like, I think if you can have it look like a nice mm. piece of decoration, that's nice. But I think if you just have, like, a shelf full of PS2 games, who cares? <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Maybe that's just me, but... I, I don't think it's, like... Look, I, I don't want to yuck anyone's yum, right? Like, if you want to collect video games, collect video yeah, games. Yeah, go for it. But... I, but what you guys are saying is not unwarranted either. Uh, you know, I, I just, just feel like in my experience with collecting old games, I'm always like, "Ooh, I'm gonna like go back to this and like play it, and this is like totally worth my time, and like maybe it'll be an increase in value." And then it becomes a thing that I have to like. It's a burden, you know what I mean? Like it's on a shelf. I played it for 15 minutes. Hmm. Um, there's definitely been, yeah, I don't know. I think I would just go for like, I mean, go for what you want to go for. If you want to get all the PS2 games, go for it. But like. I don't know. I think the rare stuff and the stuff that like looks good on a shelf mm. and is like interesting to look at because otherwise you're probably just going to be sitting on your shelf a lot of the time sitting on your shelf. I, yeah, okay. like I, I get um, I you know, people ask me like, you know, oh, you got all these games, you know, you're trying to like, you know, have like a real collection or whatever. And it's like, no, like every console, every game that yeah. I own is generally just something that I wanted to buy somewhere along the way. I have not gone out of my way to, to like try and you know juice up those libraries in in subsequent years like once those consoles stopped being you know the the de facto current console and like i just i know that if i got into it it would become a dark obsession and mm -hmm. i don't want that like <laughs> i i have enough like media collection tendencies i think i need to just leave that one off to the side be like this is the stuff i played this is stuff i've looked at for work that is it. That is as far as I'm willing to go with it. Everyone's different. And maybe, you know, if you've got the, the, the capital to spend, you know, sure. I mean, if it makes you happy, go for it. I just I, I, I've seen people go down this path and it can be a dark one. 
I, I think yeah. it, there's something cool to like, and I don't know, Adam, exactly how you plan on displaying this sort of stuff, but I think you can get away with like being creative and like, you know, I don't know. I've seen people do some cool stuff with like making art out of that, out of like old games and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's the direction you're going where you put stuff in like a frame, like a 3D kind of frame thing. I think some of that might be cool where you almost do like, um, you know, like a cross section of like what was in like the case and the cartridge and stuff like that. That might, that might be a thing to yeah. pursue uh, probably on a smaller scale, but um, you got to display it nicely. Yeah. I mean, I, I also don't want to like not answer this guy's question either. I've got, uh, I've got, um, okay. Vinny okay. knows I've got a sickness and it's a collecting sickness. Uh, and I've, <laughs> I've got, um, I've got three things that I have learned uh, with the help of my, wife uh because they are the, the the laws laid down and just and just if you're watching the video just really take take inventory of what we're looking at <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. i want you to know this is coming from if a place you want this life <laughs> this is coming from a place of this is very real um <laughs> um first rule that i'm saying for myself take it for what you will i recommend it out there unless again everybody's different maybe you're a billionaire it doesn't really matter um First thing my wife always asks me is, or says to me, you can't do this to make money. Okay. So if you're collecting, if you're collecting this with the hope of turning it around to make money, don't do it. Right. That was the thing she said to me. I said, I want to do coins or I want to do this. If you were looking to do this to get into turning it around, don't do it. Uh, The second thing was, what's the, where are you putting this? (laughs) Mark your space. Where are you putting this? These are your boundaries. Your collection can't exceed. Every inch of the basement. Yeah, that's that's right. she like research this or is this just no, like off this the is top just of what the we've head? Heard. Like, this is what we've agreed okay. to as time has gone on, right? Like, hey, she's very specific. I love it. Well, it's, she's been married to me for <laughs> a long time. She makes good rules, though. Yeah, yeah so like, good life rules. Like, yeah. it, like, is it this? Is this, is it this shoe box? This is your collection. Great. It, if it comes out of this, yeah. then you need to pare it down to fit in this. Is it this? Maybe the shelf, <laughs> then you know, uh, <laughs> then you need to get something rid of something else, right? Uh, and in then, my experience, I think that's a good rule for pretty much anything. Like, yeah. if I have a spot for my things, my apartment is clean. The second I like no longer have a place to put something, I have too much stuff and I need to get rid of shit. Yeah, but it's very easy for a collection to start taking over where, like, you, you suddenly yeah. you start. Uh, I, this is again coming from experience where you're like, I love this, I'm displaying these things very nicely, and then suddenly half your collection is in uh, a shoebox. Suddenly, you wind up with 10 copies of Final Fantasy 12 because uh, three of them are in okay shape. You had to buy a lot to get Final Fantasy 9, mm-hmm. and it came with Final Fantasy 12 and 10. Uh, you just wind up in a situation where things start overflowing. So wait, wait, it's, uh, don't do it to make money. If you know, again, it's your, it's your money, do what you want, but just saying, uh, don't let it uh, take over all of your space. Uh, and uh, the third one is don't feed them after midnight. Well, what the hell was the third one? Um, <laughs> uh, don't let it take over your life is a big one. Um, I forget. <laughs> now I forget. Uh Oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I forgot my third rule. <laughs> uh <laughs> Uh, get rid of shit? No, that's not one. Um, make sure it's Transformers. I can't remember. Yeah, you follow that one. Can't we? Can't remember what it is. There's go definitely... ask her. No, she's upstairs with the. We'll kids. hold it down. We can host. While I mean, you're... these are not hard and fast rules. These are just the things that I feel like uh, we have come Those to. Those seem like smart rules, though. They are smart rules. Um, let me think of one then. Um, oh, <gasps> sorry. Here's the, here's what it is. What's your goal? Uh, don't open end. Ah. Uh, what is your goal? Yeah. Like mine for coin collecting was, oh, I want to have all the coins minted in the U.S. from the 20th century. And that was like, and then I was able to complete that collection. Wow. Um, That's wild. Good uh, for you, Vinny. That's cool. It's cool. It's, it's, it's it, it, like, I find that very interesting, right? Oh, start, yeah. end. Here we go. It's not an open-ended thing, right? Uh, oh, do I want the G1 Transformers, right? I'm not going to collect Beast Wars. I'm not going to do this. I'm, mm-hmm. This will make sense to people who know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, and, you know, ha- try and set a target. If you just want to do the Final Fantasies, I think that's a good place to start. Like, get, And then I would say also set a grade for yourself that's like, hey, these don't have to be mint condition, or they do have to be mint condition. So, try it so you don't wind up with all these things. So, you know, set a target that's like, hey, I'll take open boxes. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Or I'm only collecting sealed boxes of games. And I think, uh, yeah. yeah, think about your display, like Abby said. I think that's important. Enjoy Final rule, enjoy your collection. Don't just collect because you want to have everything. Try and enjoy it. Like, if it... 
if you look at it and it makes you depressed because you're like, what am I doing with my life? Then maybe you should get rid of it. Sometimes I turn around behind me and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Then sometimes I turn around and I'm, I'm like, this looks awesome. I love this. This is great. Uh, so yeah, try and enjoy it. There All right. Go. There you go. That's my that's my answer. Oh, that's a really good answer, Vinny. I hope so. Hopefully I feel like somebody. you are, as a collector, I'm glad you were here to answer this, considering all of us were just like, I don't know, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, like I'm saying, I've definitely been down that road, um, and it could be tough. It could be, yeah. you, you wind up in weird places. Well, speaking of weird places, uh-huh. Alex, we read this one from Stephen, please? Sure thing. Uh, Stephen says, hey, Beast Crew, when I was in Osaka, Japan, I visited a gothic horror-themed bar run by the Japanese equivalent of Merrill Manson and his wife, Japanese Morticia Adams. <laughs> Never have I felt so out of place. It was a wild and memorable experience, and the owner was super nice. My question, what is the weirdest, most eccentric place you have personally visited? Oh, I like this question. I don't know if I have a good answer for it. I want to see one. what this place looks like, though. Can I look this? Is yeah, I would love to see it. Cause I, I don't know. My... I'm sure if you do like Osaka goth horror bar. <laughs> yeah? yeah? Is that how you search the internet? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I search the internet. Jeff, you need help? Do you want to type it for you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Vinny would be like, yeah. scary Japan. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, right, right. I would just write Japan and be like, it's not coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Japan, I, I Marilyn say, Manson. Where is it? <laughs> Where is it? When Japan when 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 people decide to do like a theme bar or theme restaurant in Japan, at least in the ones that I've been to, uh the nobody half asses it from mm-hmm. what I it has been my experience. Uh the maybe the best heavy metal bar I have ever been to was in Tokyo. Uh this place called God's Bar that was just like it it looked like a a teenager's conception of what a cool metal bar would be, oh, that's but cool. nobody ever actually builds that because nobody goes to that trouble of making their businesses look like that in the U.S. So it was kind of amazing. The most eccentric, though, mm. I mean, I've been to a few eccentric places. I went to that church in uh, Prague that was like had nothing but skeleton bones all over oh, it and yeah, shit like that. Oh, so cool! Uh, but the most eccentric place I've been to was a restaurant in Tokyo called Kagaya. I you might remember this story. I told it when I went to Japan yeah. several years ago. I remember the pictures. Uh, so it's this restaurant owned by a genuine eccentric who I can't really assign any specific traits to other than he's just a weirdo. Uh, it's a it's a totally solid restaurant. Like the food is good. But the whole time you are there, he is hustling around the place. He has like a very limited menu and he kind of just makes what you tell him to make. Uh, but then he gets into these weird little skits every once in a while uh, that are drastically underselling how weird they are. There was definitely a, all I'm saying is there was definitely a point where during the meal, the guy put on a frog costume and began humping the heads of the people that were in the restaurant. And everyone, I think, going there knew this was going to be part of the, uh, the dinner you? theater, shall we say? I did. Uh, okay, so okay. I was totally fine with it. But it was Does and it also feel funny it, or like I'm trying to imagine it. It was yeah. a lot of like like uh, like mildly uncomfortable, but still OK with it. Laughter okay. from people okay. there. And the whole time this is going on, the guy's mother is sitting in the counter behind the kitchen and not doing anything. She's just kind of there, just sort of like staring and watching. And you can tell she has seen this show so many times. She has seen him do this so many times and she's just over it. Like it's not, it's not interesting or, or even stimulating to her anymore. It was just such an odd experience. Mm. And I highly recommend it to anyone that is in the, in in the Tokyo metro area, go seek this place out. It's super weird. Hmm. I don't think I can top that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's a tough i one. know i don't really have one i will say uh not to just only do japanese stories but when i went to japan this is like not that eccentric but it is weird when you like think about it on paper it's like very touristy but very fun it's like one of the few touristy things that i'm like you gotta go do this no it's touristy but it's really fun is the like robot restaurant mm. oh we went there too like, yeah yeah which is uh a show it's like you go and you eat and like you're sort of set up in these like like sort of like a, in a long hallway kind of stadium style and they have like these big like puppet uh dinosaurs and like robots and they fight each other and like all of these weird like puppetry and like pyrotechnics and dancing and the show is like entirely in english so it's so bizarre to have like we're in japan and here's a show entirely not for japanese people it's like all in english it was just really fascinating um it was fun though i definitely recommend it <laughs> it sounds fun but i like I, yeah, I can't really think of anything more interesting. Uh, if we're just talking about feeling wildly out of place, there was a, a time in the early 2000s where 
uh, the people I was hanging out with and one of them I wound up marrying uh, would go to a lot of clubs and raves like, uh, uh, you know, DJ sets, overpriced water, uh, a lot of ecstasy. And I that just was like never my scene as a dumb, clumsy guy who like can't dance. And so very much. I mean, I had the shiny shirts because I was from Long Island, uh, and so those just kind of came. <laughs> um, but like, boy, I just always felt like uh, like a turd. Like you ever be in like a party and you're just like, I just, I'm smiling, I'm happy, but like, man, I don't know. I could try and dance, like I don't know what to do here, and like I don't do drugs really, and like this yeah. is. Are yeah. we, I'll go. Do want, I'll go get water. I guess uh, ten dollars a bottle. What are we doing here? Why are we here? The only Have y'all real... ever been to like a teen club? No, Those are weird. No. I went oh, to a wait. teen club, and then DJ Polly D from the Jersey Shore was there. It was like a oh, meet wow. and greet. It was oh, a weird God. experience. The only, uh, the only real like straight up warehouse rave type thing I ever went to. I was probably like fifteen, sixteen. And I had just played a show with my band and there was this girl that was like friends with someone in my band. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to this rave in Oakland. And, you know, I, I she was like mildly flirting with me. So, of course, I was like, oh, yeah, no, I love raves. I love electronic <laughs> music. I love the techno. Totally. Uh, and so everyone was like, you should go. You should go. You should go. So I was like, all right, yeah, I'll go with her. So we went to this, it was an abandoned Home Depot in Oakland, uh, <laughs> and they were having a rave there, and I did not know anything about electronic music at that point. I did not really listen to it. I was not into dancing in the slightest, and immediately after walking in there, I realized I had made a terrible <laughs> mistake. Uh, not that it was a bad rave. Right. I think by all accounts, it was probably a pretty good one, uh, but I did not fit in whatsoever. Uh, I didn't... I. I don't re- I think I might have tried ecstasy that night. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, but what I do remember is that by the end of that uh, rave, uh, she and I never spoke again. <laughs> she kind of disappeared halfway through the night. And then I only reconvened with her later uh, when it was like, so we're going home now. Right. And then that was it. <laughs> yeah. I could add to that list. Maybe every prom I ever went to of. Okay. Oh, I never How went to did prom. You go to? I, I, oddly enough, I went to, I don't think I ever went to one for my own grade, but I went to like four. Really? Of them. What? Yeah. Wow! That's so wild. Like a couple Look from you. Other schools. I don't. They. I all remember them being horrible, terrible. Not horrible, terrible experiences. They're so but like expensive. Super too, right? awkward. Uh, they weren't that expensive for me. I just rented oh, the. Tops. I feel like my prom was like sixty dollars for a ticket. So I was, in, that's what, I think that's why, cause I was invited to them. So I don't think I had to pay. Oh. And then I just had to rent the tux, but I, I again was like a, probably a very bad date. Uh, and also an idiot. <laughs> like, you know, just like, <laughs> like, uh, like just like after the prom being like, uh, all right, I'm going to go home. Be like, wait, you're going home. Yeah. I'm going to go home. I got to go to work tomorrow. We're, we, we're all going to this house we rented. Nah, that doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> I'm going to go Have home. fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for taking me to the prom, though. That was super. I guess that was cool. Uh, we're going to go. Uh, yeah. So sorry to everyone who <laughs> took a lame me to a prom. <laughs> It's unbelievable. Yeah, bad. I I don't have great. I don't remember them much at all because I probably was just not. I am sorry. I apologize. I'm gonna air this out. Thanks for being my therapist. All right. <laughs> <laughs> What's up next? Yeah, I gotta relive all that stuff. Uh, do we want to do one more? Yeah, one more. Oh, well, we're past time already, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. we should yeah, probably wrap it. Okay. Yeah, one more. Okay. Well, then the last one, Vinny. You can read this one from Matthew. Okay. Uh ooh, about mice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it's a long one, but it's yeah. basically just asking for a mouse recommendation if you don't want to read the whole thing. Uh I just bought a new gaming laptop and now my f- I find myself in the position of needing to buy a new mouse. This wasn't supposed to be an issue for me because I have a mouse that I love. Uh, that I've had for many years. I got it for 15 bucks on Amazon a long time ago, and it's perfect for me. Two years ago, I had to sell my gaming PC so I could pay my mortgage. Oh, I was, it wasn't a big deal. Okay. Uh, it was just a few months of rough <laughs> times, and I still had consoles to play games on. Okay, I feel a little better. Thank you. Uh, however, since I no longer had a gaming PC, I took my beloved Amazon mouse to work with me because the mice they provided us with were absolute garbage. Now, here's the problem. I would like to just buy another of these mice to keep at home, but they no longer make them. 
So I come mm. to you, GB Eats crew, to ask for your recommendations. So what type of mouse does everyone use? I have this mouse that uh, Bacalar, I think, somehow procured for me. I don't. It was still weird. I think he still did something weird and uh, got me one. What is it called, Jeff? Uh, the people I had to kill? Yeah, who'd you have to kill for what? this mouse? Oh. What is this? It's um, a super expensive mouse that you were like, I'm I've using got a it uh a swift point swift point it's like the the fanciest mouse i've ever used and it's amazing yeah. and i actually if it were it's not cool. a million dollars i would recommend it uh but it yeah is. it's too much money um I, I you can get um logitech has like very affordable good gaming mice uh the g203 is good uh pretty much i honestly like depending on what you're looking for whether it be wired or wireless like you can even their their higher end I think it's the 502 is a wired one that they sell for like 50 bucks. Now I've used, I use that mouse for like a decade and it's great. Um, but even if you go want to go below that, I, I think yeah. getting a Logitech mouse, you're going to be just fine. I got a $13 mouse on Amazon cause I wanted it in white and I was like, I'll replace this eventually. And it feels really lightweight, but it's got nice colors in it Ooh, and I have no complaints. I've been using cool. it for a few years. Um, it looks like it's got like constellations on it. I don't want to show it too close because you can probably see how dirty it is. But it kind of looks like a Fabergé egg, but gamer. <laughs> yeah. Does it, have a, does it have a model number on it, Abby? For people who might want to look it up. It's all in um, Chinese. Oh, okay. So I don't know. T12. I had uh, I had the IntelliMouse for a long time, the that was which was awesome, and then I don't mm. know. I'm gonna hold up a mouse to the camera if you're watching this live. Oh, I, oh, I know what that. I don't one know is. which one. Look, this it's translucent. Is. It's it has weights on the bottom and I can't find the model number on it, but I used this for ages and I loved it. Yeah. Um, and it was it was my favorite mouse. I forget uh, the name of that one. I, I think don't it was like know. that. Mm, I'm remember. looking on the bottom of it. I'm sorry, I can't. Um L Z six three three B E. I don't know what it is. It's it's uh I don't know. The weights okay. were I like the weights. The, the, it's got it's so dumb. It's got weights on the bottom. That you can then um, decide how heavy you want it to be. Whoa, that's uh, cool. You can lift weights with your that's mouse. That's the, uh, yeah. Vin, that's the MX518. MX518? Okay. Yeah. That's that's thank you. And, that was... and no, it's not me. It's our our buddy Anthony okay. telling me. Yeah, I like this mouse a lot. Um, but that, I'll tell you what. Thanks again, Jeff, for the get me a, a, a hold of that mouse. That Swift Point thing is it's pretty freaking rad. It is too expensive for me. But it is a nice mouse. It's so much money, and and I mean, if people, I, I get asked about that mouse a couple times a year. Um, I I still really like it. You still really like it too, right? Yeah, I do. I do. I have it right here. I I can hold it up. It looks like uh, the Batman car. Yeah, it's called the Swift Point Z. I think it's actually down to one fifty now, which is like oh, wow. kind of kind of like the price it should have been i think from the start is it missing parts Vinny? is that no, what it looks like they're they're modular they're all buttons on oh i want one it is yeah. uh, that looks like a transformer <laughs> it's cool hell. It's so cool yeah. it's got like it's got like motion it's got motion sensing in it it's got vibration it does it have nice weight <laughs> i don't know uh it does have nice weight the the only problem with it though is that they kind of i don't know what was the last driver update you got on that thing man uh, I get them all it's the been time. A while. I get them all. They really? The, yeah, because they I, the software updates it. Uh, I, I do them when it says I, I need them. Yeah, I feel like they. I don't know. I'm starting to have a couple weird things with it. I did have to um, get one replaced. I don't know. I, I still like it. It's my go-to. I don't want to use anything else, but hmm. it hasn't been a flawless experience. But it's only one fifty now. That's a that's a pretty good price. That's for better. What it offers. Um. So what was mine? Was was G five? Was it a G five? What was the mouse I had? It's I an MX. I can't remember. Uh, it doesn't I oh no! People, I saw people now. The... Now he says he, it's he's wrong. It says it's the G five. G five. That's what sounds better. Um, Intel mouse though is probably my favorite mouse, but it's probably because it was my move from the rollerball to the um, uh, uh, the laser. That was when I, oh, cool. uh, when I moved. That All right, so ridiculous that roller ball balls. Oh god, remember cleaning those freaking rollers with that little pin? I thing? loved it. Oh, it's so gross. That gunk. I love popping out the ball. It's so satisfying. The ball was awesome. I wonder if there's like somebody yeah. collected all those balls from roller balls. Oh yeah, and like just that's like a jar full of like all of them. They're like fun. They're they're not quite bouncy. They're you not. Know? You always think they're going to be bouncy, but they're not really quite bouncy. He heavier than you remember. Heavier, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you guys ever use track balls? Like as a actual device? 
No, I mean, I um, did. I used to have a trackball mouse, but I have not used one in a very long time. Um, all right. Those are sure. the ones with the big red thing on top, right? I mean, they're all different types. Um, yes. We had, I think we had one for one of the computers at home. Uh, we had, there was also that thing, I don't know if you remember, it was like a column, like you hold it, like you're holding a cup of coffee kind of thing. It's a mouse that oh. you like use your thumb to move around. They, oh, they, cool. They've done a lot of weird stuff for, for mice. Uh, well, should we move, uh, move out of the emails? Yes, sir. All right. That could mean only one thing. It's time for <laughs> corrections. <laughs> We've got corrections. Send them into beastcats at giantbomb.com. That is beastcats at giantbomb.com. Abby Russell, what do we have for corrections this week? No corrections. Yay. Hell yeah. Perfect show. We did Woo. a perfect show. A perfect show. We always do. All right. Turns out when you have a live chat going, you can just read that <laughs> off and be like, whoops, that was wrong. <laughs> That's right. My mouse is a G5. Uh, this mouse <laughs> yeah. is indeed too expensive. Uh, and uh, that's going to do it for this week's show then let's wrap up so somebody else can get in here and take over I'm going to stop playing the corrections music so we can start the end music here we go you ready this is what yes. I'm talking about uh, that's going to do it for this week's show everybody if it was your birthday over the last week happy birthday to ya uh, Alex Navarro Abby Russell Jeff Backler thank you very much for joining me this week thank you thank you Vinny uh, thank Jeff Backler especially thank you for uh, for joining us because I know your schedule is actually pretty wild people coming at you so thank you very much everything's fine of course this is the this is the happiest moment of my week so ah, that's super sweet I is like it really you. Uh, I know of work wise I think it is yes I miss uh, smelling you, Jeff. I miss Yeah, I, miss I, you I really do. Do you guys miss my musk? I do miss oh, your musk. all the time. I miss your musk I wish, every day of my life. Can musk candle? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to, I'll send some musk to you guys through the United thank States you. Postal Service. Uh, I want to thank everybody who is listening to the show. I want to thank uh, everybody who has been able to maintain their premium subscription or has uh, acquired premium subscription during these times. I do appreciate it. I think we are having a sale coming up. So I will say that. Give Matt Rory a break. Uh, and don't uh, and uh, uh, just do it during the sale, so then you don't have the sale, and he's got to do. A, I don't think I don't know if he does handle the refunds anymore. God bless you, Matt Rory, Brandon, all that stuff. Chop these cats. See you later. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>